the green. Paints, games, chats, green. This is where the party's at. Party at the green. We got guests here to stay. Welcome to the green room. Best party of day at the green room. Hello. Welcome back to the green room. Uh, my name is Justin Barron. I'm your host. And uh, this is a place where we party chat <laughs> oh man we're just partying like crazy partying Can so hard this like it's a, a tuesday our... night right. yeah there's <laughs> a we think there's a ghost here we're that's sure how great ghost. the party is there's so. a ghost Ooh. wait did i miss yeah. the ghost conversation yes oh yeah yes 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 because <laughs> you said oh there's only one person watching and then she, and then we were talking and i was like no there's four people watching the stream and i'm like that means that it's the three of us and a ghost where is the oh, ghost? ghost? What does it mean? Um, yeah, pretty mysterious. Thanks for joining us. Um, we're gonna be doing a little. I'm gonna be doing a little painting later on. Um, and right now we're gonna chat. Uh, so I have two guests with me, as you can see, my friends Rebecca Munoz Smith and Ted Bushman. Wow. Hi guys. Yeah, do that again. <laughs> 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 Show me you're um, born in the 90s. Show me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, Rebecca and Ted, um, one of you I've known for a long time, and one of you I met like a week or two ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, hey, you guess Kat Carter, me. what's up? How you doing? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Um, so. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Ted. Ted, I, we just met. Like yes, last week. <laughs> yes, moments um, ago. Right. Um, and so I don't know much about you, so I'm really excited for this for this chat for this interview. Um, hey, Pierre, yeah, what's up? Hi, buddy. Thanks for stopping oh, good. in, man. I'm glad we. I'm glad we've got someone impartial watching. That's yes, gonna that's be helpful good. That's for key. our. That's for key. Our, <laughs> yeah, for our debates. Yeah, we're gonna get. It's gonna get pretty hot i'm pretty because I, I heard that 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 the rebecca and i were gonna go head to head in the mm -hmm. end by the end of this like yeah, it was okay. a battle for your friendship sort of thing yeah so so yeah I just, I, I just recently met ted we are playing um blood of my blood together on friday nights yes. uh, that's our friday night stream um meanwhile rebecca and i go way back to what like 23 14 15 15 i think 15 yeah right? wow yeah um we're, uh yeah everyone's battling Which seems like it was yesterday now. yeah <laughs> <laughs> um everyone's battling for my friendship and then impartial pierre can be our moderator <laughs> thank you <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so rebecca and i did a show together a long time ago mm -hmm. um and we got very close <laughs> during <laughs> that show what was the show <laughs> um do you want to talk about it? Uh, yeah, sure. It's called the Ghost Is of Mote Bravo. Oh. No, 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 no. no, I, just, no, no. <laughs> I wanted to stop talking, so. Let's no, you're. <laughs> yeah, it was called the uh, the Ghost of Lote Bravo, and it was sad. <laughs> it's oh. not a happy play, uh, but it was so good. Um, yeah, it's yeah. it's it's about um, a mother and a daughter in Juarez, Mexico, and um, the mom's trying to find her daughter who went missing, and it's it's kind mm. of um, it takes place kind of in somewhat two separate timelines and then converges eventually right um and uh it's Actually, it's oh go ahead, go ahead no i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you but i just nah. realized that another ghost light member was also in that show uh bradley thomas who was yeah. also in pitfalls and ponies he was oh in the gosh. show as well um but yeah, uh, Rebecca and I had some intimate scenes together in that in that show. So it was <laughs> wow. It'll always He's be cool. a part of me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that bad? That bad? <laughs> like, you know, in a good way. Um, in a chronic sort of way. <laughs> so anyway, Ted, right now you're losing the war for my friendship until we oh, get yeah. our own no intimate scene. Yes. Uh, yeah. I've seen I, we'll see no. how intimate we get in, in uh, Blood of My Blood. I, I think we'll get pretty. I think we'll get pretty. <laughs> Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'll be more less like you know the normal kinds of intimacy, and more like ah, uh, our eyeballs will be replaced with one another's eyeballs. Graham, if you're watching, don't yeah. You know, Graham, no that. ideas. Write this down, Graham. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's talk about uh, the shows that we're doing. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so, Ted, Blood of My Blood. Oh, there, there's Dark Blade yeah, DM. Yes. What's up, buddy? Thanks for watching. Um, so, Blood of My Blood, uh, you know, we've talked about it before on this show, on this channel. Um, definitely go watch it. It's, it's fantastic. The VODs are up right now for it. Um, <laughs> getting inspired for pitfalls and ponies. <laughs> yeah. Let's... Fu- let's I think Emma's like God. determined. Emma's determined to have some sort of like a a, a bloody pony crossover. Um, oh my gosh! So yes. I don't know. Oh, you blood of my first. pony. Blood yeah. of my pony. Yeah. <laughs> They'll walk a mile with each other's feet. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Pit falls in blood. <laughs> um, so Ted, Ted, you play the character Briar in yes. Blood of My Blood. Now, mm-hmm. before, okay, I'm gonna actually renege something that I just said. Um, Please. Uh, we're not going to go into your characters just yet. I want to talk more about you yeah. guys as individuals first. Cool. Um, yep. And I, like I said, I don't really know you too well, Ted. Um, so, Ted, like, what? What's your tabletop role playing like experience? Yeah, um, I'm gonna really quickly. I don't know if this is affecting him at all, but the, but my sheepdog just opened the door, and I'm like, don't don't open the door, sheepdog. Well, he's, I thought he's, it was the ghost. I was so excited. Them? Are they I in would, there? Gilly, Gilly. I don't know if he'll come. Um, Gilly, come to I was us. About to, I, I was about to call yeah, out. You like can, he could, I, just, I was like, I don't think him. it's affecting anything, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, he can't. I'm, sorry, I'm just gonna close. You're good. Quick, you're good. It's distracting me. <laughs> sure. I think just because of our discussion of ghosts. So, I, um, yeah. Dark Nadra, <laughs> hey, what's up? Thanks for stopping in. Yeah. Hey, what's up? Um, so, yeah, my experience with tabletop role playing. I did it for the first time about four or five years ago. At this point, maybe mm-hmm. even. I think it was 2015, 2016, um, with my friend Carson, who he and Graham and I uh, played together and some things. Um, I okay. I kind of bounced off of it immediately. We did a great sort of first few sessions, which was super fun um, with him and some friends. And then a couple of years ago, I discovered some sort of alternate, uh, some other tabletop RPGs, so not D&D, um, which is sort of everyone's started thing. So I really got into Numenera, which I love. It's this like billion years in the future setting that's just so weird and fantastical um i really love that and so i then started um in my like normal audaciousness i then immediately sort of jumped to DM- gming those games so i, I gm sure. a couple sessions of numenera and then kind of with the like many people this is kind of i think i feel like this is going to be a really common story very soon which is in the pandemic suddenly i did a lot more tabletop role yeah um, <laughs> but uh yeah but i uh, i started uh, gming a consistent numenera campaign which we've run all through last year and we're you know i think well i haven't talked to the group yet but i think we're gonna try to do a session on friday well not on friday on saturday um uh but uh yeah i did that and then i um I've been running a Blades in the Dark game with uh, Graham is actually in that game uh, and a couple other people, which has been a so, serious jam. Yeah, Blades in the Dark is like something that I've always heard about is like fantastic and I've always wanted to play it. Um, it's very cool. Um, yeah, you should definitely give it a give it a go sometime. It's super fun. And I just think it, it does such a great job of letting its mechanics encourage the kind of sort of storytelling you want and creating exciting moments and... Um, yeah. Anyway, I won't jump totally. too far into to that, but that's that's a big thing for me. So, yeah, and and I come, I mean, I come from a theater background, studied theater, and um, have sort of worked in New York and live in New York. I'm currently in Pittsburgh with with family for the moment, but I'm leaving, heading back to New York tomorrow. Um, and uh, yeah, that's sort of that's sort of my yeah. intro into uh, tabletop role playing. But I mean, all that comes from my love of fantasy, which you know discovered when I found a bunch of sort of yellowed paperbacks on my dad's bookshelf and got super into like really nerdy stuff as a what a as magical a way to like learn about this you just like mm-hmm. find this like ancient tome yes exactly <laughs> honestly if the pages hadn't been yellow i wouldn't have been as excited about it it's that it felt so it's, yeah. the, it's the perfect gateway yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. nonsense thanks exactly. so much for uh liking my iron man stuff back there and oh and rebecca your snorlax got a shout out too oh hey um so I got a my guests don't know this, but uh, I I like to surprise my guests with little things every now and then. Um, so later on, we're going to be doing, uh, speaking of Snorlax, we're going to be doing uh, a little Pokemon thing uh, <gasps> later on. So Ooh, cool. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Um, so <laughs> sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. That'll, that'll be in a little bit here because um, Pokemon Day is Saturday. I work at a game store, you guys. I work at a board game store. So... 
all of this stuff is just like That's constantly so cool. on my mind. Uh, like, <laughs> like you said, you said Numenera, and I immediately thought of the book that's sitting on the shelf that yes. nobody has picked up <laughs> since I started oh, working sure. there. Yes. Yes. Yeah, there's kinda, a Pokemon Day. Yeah. Um, oh. Pokemon Day, and and they got like, uh, what's that guy's name? Um, uh, I like him. Uh, the one who sings Machamp. Sunflower. It's Machamp. Oh, oh, Post, uh, Malone. Post Malone. Post Malone. Yeah, Malone. he's doing a, a concert. He's, a live yeah, concert. He's doing a concert for it on Saturday uh, for Pokemon I, Day. So. Sorry, I thought you were talking about your board game store. I'm like, they. Yeah, we got Post, Post Malone and yeah, Blastoise. Post Malone. <laughs> what do you think Post Malone does on his spare time? <laughs> he works at a game store. Just right. look at him. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, uh, uh, Ecat Carter knows about the the rigorous tests that I've put people through on this show. Oh no! Um, oh no! It'll be yeah. It's just <laughs> that's going to be the final uh, oh. countdown of of earning oh, my friendship. winning the friendship. Yeah. Contest. Oh dang! Wow. So that's that's amazing, Ted. You literally found this through through. Uh, I mean, so your dad played. So it's like, well, is it a generational thing for you? <laughs> uh, so the books that I found were all fantasy and science fiction that cool. got me into that world. He, I see. Okay. Mm. He, he, but he he is like a classic wonderful nerd. Like we like my friends came for the last week. A couple friends from New York. We sort of having our little bubble, and we just like played board games the last whole week. Like super nerdy. My dad is just like kind of you know a, any nerdy place that I've that I've watched, he's gone before. Gotcha. And so I'm just gonna follow him in all these ways. But he he never really got the chance to play D and D until. This last year, when he also started a group with the pandemic, with a bunch of young people who he who he knew from a congregation that he was in. Um, cool. So uh, yeah, so he's been finally doing that. And actually, Graham and I and uh, we we played last week. We played like a couple of sessions, which was super fun for him. So yeah, but yeah, it was from you know definitely my father's tutelage sort of led me into the nerdy realm. And I've you know we we've you know have had our different interests since then. But it was kind of fun. It's been a fun bonding point. Um, Good. It's been very cool. So. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Um, real quick, Kinziki, thanks so much for the follow. Appreciate it. Um, Kinziki, we had a question you are the, from the you chat. are the best. Kinziki's the best. Kinziki's Freaking currently so cool. in the top of my friendship chart now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dang it. Now you have to compete with Kinziki. <laughs> so we had a question from the chat. Uh, what, what's your starter Pokemon? Do you guys have a, do you guys have a specific one? Um, I usually go with whichever is the fire type. Fire type's always just what I go with, so... Yeah, I'm yeah. I'm, I go with uh, <laughs> I go with grass. I like grass types. I think it's just because I have a really soft spot for Bulbasaur, so mm. I'm gonna say Bulbasaur. Yeah, yeah, yeah I Bulbasaur. got. I have a really Bulbasaur. soft spot for um, Vulpix. I have like same. Oh yes. Uh, four, like Vulpix things, and then like a Vulpix uh, like hood costume thing that they sold what? on the Poke. Yeah, Vulpix. She's that that that's my Pokemon. That's next that's time my... you're on, I need you to have that on please i can yeah i will i will definitely <laughs> bring that with me <laughs> um, okay uh uh there's no guidelines or rules pierre that's not gonna happen no 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 i make the rules as we go um, <laughs> um so dope uh rebecca what about you what's your history what's your experience with uh with Role playing. Well, I didn't actually get started into playing um, role playing games until I actually moved here to Kansas City yeah. in 2015. Uh, and so um, I had moved into a house with a, a friend of mine from college, and like this house, like it had a bunch of people living in it. Yeah. And uh, her and her husband owned it, and they wanted to make they wanted, well, they didn't want to make us, but they wanted to give us an opportunity to be social with everybody else in the house. And so, um, mandatory, they theme. mandatory, uh, tabletop night. And so like on Saturdays, I think, or Sundays we would do, um, they did like this homebrew role play game and that's kind of where I got started. And then we eventually went into, uh, Pathfinder and now I, I've, I've played some D and D like, like official D and D stuff, but for the most part, like I've only done one shots and things yeah. like that. So I've never done a long campaign before. And so, uh, until, until, until Spellbound, Spellbound and that's the longest campaign I've ever done. Cause they either, they kind of fizzled off because people couldn't get their schedules to line up or, um, like they were just one shots. So right. <laughs> that right. was my experience, but totally. like, 
my entire childhood has been nothing but fantasy and adventure books like Lord of the Rings and Red Wall and Artemis Fowl and all that other nonsense. And like, I loved those. And so I'm like, I don't know how I avoided like D and D before I got right. out of college. It took me till after I got out of college to get into D and D. And I don't know how that happened, but I successfully avoided it somehow. Yeah. So, yeah I, that's about I didn't it. get it until like fifth edition came out, which is around 2015, like 2013, mm -hmm. I think. So, yeah. I mean, and you know, I've talked about this before, but Graham, the DM for blood of my blood introduced it to me. Um, but I just love everybody's different journeys to, to getting where they're at. Right. It's a lot it's of so, fun. It's so cool. Um, well, I feel like you also have an interest in it, Justin, because you're kind of like, a, you know, a, a patriarch in the, in the line of, I mean, patriarch in the, in the good sense, not the, not the horrible sense. <laughs> in um, the blood of my blood sense? <laughs> yeah, of like, you know, of like sort of reaching this down through the generations. Like I, I, I was watching the intros to the, the ponies stream and it's like, everyone's like, this is the lineage of how Father Justin has led yes. me. <laughs> Father yeah. Justin brought me into the fold. I'm, <laughs> I'm so happy that I was able, I mean, that I could, show that to that many people it's it's, yeah, it's, it's been fantastic and that they want to continue playing you know what i mean mm -hmm. um so i it, it brings me joy um uh dark nadra um said uh you've only been a dm i, I we talked about that on last week's stream actually about the fact that we uh like a lot of the time we're just we're i'm i personally am mostly a dm most of the time, and honestly, I I prefer it that way. It's my it's mm -hmm. my it's my dirty little secret. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer to be uh to be the one reacting. Um, and impartial Pierre's only played one shots. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally love the one shots. They're I think fun. They're so much fun. You can just do so much more. And I mean, yes, there's something to be said about like building a character, like you all do in spell spellbound. But um, yeah, you know, it's yeah. There's there's. There's some fun stuff yeah, it's, that comes with like mini so, arcs and stuff Yeah, like it's that. so much fun doing one shots and like like three session campaigns because there's there's sort of this um uh like suddenness to it. Like and like yeah. you get, you just you just go for it. It's like riding a roller coaster. You're just you're like, this is temporary and I'm gonna have fun and I don't have to think too hard about it. And like some of the characters I've come up with are just so much fun but it's also one of those things where i'm like i could not play that character for longer than three sessions right um but so, uh i've wanted to try dming i'm i'm hoping to do that soon actually so okay yeah okay. very i good. took you i took your 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 class session thingy if you remember That's i right. took notes i have a notebook I, with I your notes a, in it I like did a how to be a dm workshop for <laughs> anybody in the in the Kansas City area who was interested wow, because cool. I was like I don't want to be the only one among my group of friends DMing all the time yeah but um, I found a, a game that looks that looks fun and doable and like like it's it's you know I'm like okay there's not a whole lot I actually have to do here like it's mostly yeah. just plugging the characters in and adding a few NPCs and so but right. it's called Cats and Catacombs Cats it looks fun yeah it I looks have, like so uh, much fun I have Dungeons and Doggies I think we've talked about this but I yeah I have the yeah, little, yeah yeah like dog figures like like this one it's really hard to see uh maybe you can see him. yeah i see him yeah. Yeah, he's a little out of focus but he's cute a little out of focus there i yeah. oh, like he's got these pack go. oh there he is oh yeah. there he is oh, oh yeah that's great. an example of one that i've done in the past but yeah um, i don't think they've released the figurines to the stores yet like you have to like right. i think they're still like you 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 buy into the the thingy yeah I can't like do Kickstarter. words right now. Yeah. Kickstarter, there it is. Thank you. Um, so the thingy thing. Yeah. Um, real quick. Uh, I think I think this is a good question. Let's keep it. Let's say. Uh, what What do you love most about role the TRPGs, the role playing, all that stuff, and mm -hmm. what intimidates you the most about it still? Um, any thoughts on that? For both of you. Um, I think, <laughs> thanks, Dad. Uh, I think for me, um, it's definitely the role playing. I love storytelling, and it's why I'm kind of interested in trying the DM part because I do write stuff. I just don't share it with people. And um, I love world building. That's always like that's always been my problem when I write is that I do all this world building, and then I never like I'm terrible with coming up with characters to put into the world. And so I was like, oh well, maybe this is what I should be doing with it then. But um, 
I love role playing. I love the stories that people come up with and like people just building on top of each other's stories and having these fictional characters interact and create such a bond mm -hmm. in such a short amount of time. The mechanics still terrify me. I get so like intimidated when I try to play like a magic based class. Sure. Like I like go running for the hill screaming after like one session. I'm just, I get so scared of mechanics sometimes. That's why I like playing barbarians because you just hit stuff. <laughs> That's, my, <laughs> wife, my wife is the exact same way. She only, <laughs> she only plays uh, barbarian. <laughs> That's like the only class she likes to play. You don't have to think too hard about it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just have to roll high and not die. <laughs> right. right. Ted, that's like the, uh, that's that's the shirt. Roll high, don't die. Roll high, don't <gasps> die. I do want that to be a shirt. We should start our merch. We should make that. <laughs> yep. All right, just taking notes there. Take some notes. Just writing that down. I have this. I, I I have found this random utensil, which is a it's a a crayon, but you can uh, it's like extendable. What's the term for that? Anyway, I don't. It's a very confusing device extendable to me. Extendable crayon. <laughs> Yeah, you can like spin the top of it and that makes sense. Okay, um, what do I love about t tabletop role playing games and what intimidates me about them? What I love about them is, um, uh, I mean, the the collaborative storytelling experience is is so exciting and the freedom that you can give to someone to explore an interesting world. Um, I definitely have come from it a lot from the GM angle, and so I'm kind of intimidated by being a player because I feel like I. Um, What's nice about being a GM is that, like, when you're jumping between characters, you can kind of, you know, if you mess up the accent a little bit or, like, you know, the character isn't perfect, you, know, you just move on to another one. But, like, when you're the player, you have to consistently yeah. bring something. And, and, and I so often as a player, I get, like, GM impulses as a player. I'm like, oh, this is what should happen in the story next. This would be a good complication. <laughs> and then I, like, message it to Graham and he's like... Thank you. Yeah. Thank we'll you. See you. And then we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, <delete>. uh. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> so, I mean, I try not to be uh, pushing, well, you know, pushing on anything. But anyway, um, yeah. But I, so, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a better way to say because it, it, the sort of the yeah collaborative storytelling experience is kind of obvious. What I think is the most exciting about it is. Um, it's a world in which people get to kind of control the narrative of their own kind of TV show. I mm -hmm. love that kind of feeling mm -hmm. and people being able to um, live out a genre and um, kind of, I, I mean, I imagine there's a, this is novel by Neil Stevenson uh, called the diamond age. And there's this, p this profession, which is being a rector, which is essentially being a virtual reality actor. Um, and no. you have to have improvisation skills and have, these sort of um, you know uh, improvisation skills, but also know the scripts, and you you know you have you essentially have permanently installed into your skin these nanites that are like motion capture, um, and so you just like are in a booth and you act with people around the world and like create these narratives. Um, what? Yeah, and it's that such like really being cool, actually. Yeah, yeah I, I would do that job. I would. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I might, I might get those implants. <laughs> I, <yeah. laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't it be so cool? It um, feels like working at an escape room. That's what it sounds like. Yes, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I think like one of the the one of the powerful potential futures of storytelling is storytelling where that's more second person, where like mm -hmm. you know it's not me sitting on a couch watching a bunch of people on a screen. It's you know me as the viewer, me as the viewer actively interacting with the narrative. And this yeah. Is really, really yeah. Cool no, I love it. I, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think we're getting more into that with like immersive uh sh like shows too like yes which... mm -hmm. oh absolutely yes yeah, sleep no more and all sorts of things right. william mm -hmm. would know more about that right. too william mm -hmm. and claire Ooh, i'm gonna talk blood to my blood. about that yeah we have him on. did you ever uh watch um oh shoot what was that that netflix uh movie with uh the pick the choose your own adventure one they've what been was doing that, that a couple oh. they've been doing that with a lot of a lot of their my brain says jabberwocky but that wasn't there's it. The, well there's uh, the black it mirror was, episode wasn't it? yeah it. and then there was yeah I think the um, what's uh, Unbreakable Kenny Schmidt did an episode with it. Oh uh, yeah. And then uh -huh. I know there was like a You versus the Wild with like Bear Grylls. Mm -hmm. Anyway. But yeah, I'm like I I those were like I've I've never felt such a rush watching TV than doing those where you're actually interacting with the thing and like yeah uh, and just like VR headsets and everything now like I think you're absolutely on like on the nose about that. That's mm -hmm. kind of where entertainment's going. Bandersnatch. 
Bandersnatch, that's it. Which is, yes! which is a Jabberwocky reference. That is. All right, guys. <laughs> Impartial I was here is how classy you are. In, in the lead for my friendship. No! <laughs> <laughs> the moderator is going to win. It wasn't ready. <laughs> uh, I wanted to uh, to mention also uh, uh, a while ago, Kate5CZ9 uh, mentioned that one shots are really fun for, for trying out characters or systems that systems that you don't want to commit to. And I mm -hmm. think that's that's so true. That's uh, accurate. <laughs> like if, if I'm not sure I want to do yes. something or like my group isn't sure, oh my god, mm -hmm. it's it's perfect just to do a one shot and then see where we go with it. Yeah, that's usually where I play the magic ones because I'm like, mm, I'm just gonna like dip my toe in the water, but I'm not gonna commit fully to this yet because yeah. I'm still scared. <laughs> so I also noticed that Kate said something about hiding um, extensive color-coded <laughs> notes on magic you saw on the table. My question for Kate is, what is your preferred, if, if you're still on the stream, is what is your preferred magic class? Like, is there one that yeah. you're like, obviously oh, the most fun? I mean, do That's you like go question. full full magic tech with wizard or are you like, you know, wild magic sorcerer or cleric or what the heck do you do? So, you know, if you're there, you know, interesting. That's a solid question. Um, well, while we are thinking about that, um, I want to talk about your characters. I want to talk about um, Star Whistle and mm -hmm. I just realized my name's Star Whistle. Um, yeah. I was like, hello, Star Whistle. <laughs> I just... um, <laughs> so you said that's your middle name? Star is your middle name? Yeah, S-T-A-R-R, -R, Star. Wow. <laughs> or Stare, technically. Yeah. Stare. Stare. Stare, Whistle. Um, it's a family so let's, name. Yeah, let, Rebecca, let's start with you. Um, uh. <laughs> talk to me a little. Just who is Star Whistle? Um, why do we? Why do we love her? It, her, yes. Her, yeah, her. Um, well, uh, she's a little less thought out than my Spellbound character. I'm kind of been playing her as I go, a little more one shotty. That yeah. I'm just kind of like, oh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But um, she's uh, she's a lot of fun because uh, she's. Uh, uh, it's a lot of basically me when I'm hyper and in a good mood. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> and uh, but uh, yeah, she's uh, a uh, uh, she's an aspiring singer, country singer, and uh, she's just getting started. And so she's kind of left the family home in Appaloosa, and she's out yeah. and about looking for friends and adventure. Um, but uh, Appaloosa, yeah. That's so good, Appaloosa. So, um, so to, just so our, anybody who doesn't know what we're talking about here with the oh, yeah. Star Whistle, <laughs> this is in the stream, uh, the, uh, the show that we have on our stream, Pitfalls and Ponies, that airs on Sunday mornings, and it just started uh, this last weekend. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, Rebecca plays uh, a, a character, a pony, basically. Um, and, and she's like super, she's a performer, right? She's like into yeah. singing and, and yeah. that's like a whole, her whole shtick. Yeah, she's basically Dolly Parton with hooves. Yeah, like, like that's the kind of the vibe I'm going for with her. Sure. And so so been I don't know. A lot of Dolly Parton. I don't know much about like the the mechanics and stuff like that for this game mm -hmm. for the for the My Little Ponies game. Like, mm -hmm. do you have like a special power or a certain like skill set that is better than um, others? Kind of. Uh, you. Uh, you there's like a select list of things you can get but like if you talk to your dm you can add more things in if you want but yeah there's usually like one specific skill that you have that's better than the others and like everybody has a natural talent that comes with whatever um type of pony they picked so like earth ponies are hardy and super strong uh unicorns naturally have magic and pegasus can fly okay. and so those are kind of your natural talent but then you can also have something on top of that like um uh, Kelsey, who plays Sylph, uh, he has something called the stare, which is basically like the evil eye and you can get anyone to do whatever you say. Oh. And like, that's actually from the TV show. Like there's a character who she nice. just stares at someone and then they just, they're like, oh, okay, I'll do it. Like, it's basically intimidation. Um, but like the mechanics are very bare bones. And so it's like, you just roll one dice for this one specific thing. Mm -hmm. So like charm or whatever. And um, since my character's a performer, I added a little extra point into charm and took away from strength. So God help us when we have an encounter because I'm going to get my butt that's kicked. That's why you have the team. That's, that's, <laughs> that's, what the why, for. that's what the team is for. So then to go on the other side of that uh, uh, <laughs> spectrum, we have Ted playing Briar in, mm -hmm. what's Briar's last name? Does Briar have Briar. Well, he, I, 
put it as Denovan, but then I realized it with him being mother's son. I, I, don't, I, I don't know if that's a, that. Yeah, I don't know if that's a taken name or you know, because we know so little about mothers. So, right. Um, but Briar, so so Star Whistle, not much strength. Briar is nothing but strength. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Briar has a don't, Briar has a negative one to charisma rolls, so he is very bad at uh, any sort of charm. Um, you know. Um, and yes, is is the barbarian? So roll high, don't die. Um, and uh, he's, yeah, he's an interesting, interesting character to work with. You know, I, I think, uh, you know, Graham approached us, and I won't spoil this because I think it'll be interesting to see what people see. So, or maybe we've, all, maybe he's already talked about it on stream. I don't know, but you know, he approached us with some specific, not um, decisions about our characters besides the fact that we're members of the family, but with ideas about theme and sort of the kind of angle of uh sort of personality that we could go with right. so I, i'm i'm interested in in that um I, he sees himself as a protector as the kind of person who gets things done um when other people don't um and uh yeah i'm really interested to see where he goes because it, the, immediately jumping in with the rest of the group um the other night was just it's, it's 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 a very interesting party and such an irregular um system you know, situation because we're yeah. not like all right well let's go hunt down some big monster um, mm -hmm. you know or it's it's this mystery and and also these people who like the, who we feel conflicted about their goals even you know and or the audience might and so anyway right. I'm, I'm very excited to see what happens with him down the line so <clears throat> i would love to talk more about your characters but I really want to get to some other stuff, too. Um, what I'll say here is... Um, oh, real quick, we have a question from Kalosian. Uh, did you know the other players before playing, Ted? Oh, um, I I did. So uh, we, had a, we had a meeting where we all sort of met and chatted a little bit about the show and, and, and also about content, which I think, you know, it's worth saying that Graham, I think, was extremely wise and sensitive in the way that he approached, like getting us started and making sure that we were all comfortable with the degree of horror that was going to exist in blood of my blood which i think is very cool um so I, I knew him uh emma and i had played a couple sessions um last summer we did a few things together and it was a lot of fun i was a an extremely nervous unwilling warlock who was who had become a warlock without wanting to without yeah. consent um and she <laughs> was this huge goliath cleric so now i'm a huge you know barbarian guy and she's this uh little uh, she's a warlock actually so it's yeah, kind of yeah, this fun it, reversal it. um to some degree that's great yeah so i knew her and um also knew graham because he ran those sessions uh justin and i had just met uh, and also william and i you know just met doing that um cool yes cool so yeah well um you know we'll i want we're going to talk more about these shows specifically but um okay. just real quick during our break um, I did find some highlights of Star Whistle and Briar that, you know, uh, as an audience, y'all are welcome to, uh, to check out during the break if you want to see a little bit of a tidbit of uh, the great work that both of these wonderful players are putting on. But I want to talk more about, uh, less about being a player and more about being a, a creator, just an artist. Um, you both have made huge contributions to these two shows um rebecca with your character art and art in general um mm -hmm. just non-stop character art that you make um <laughs> and ted with the hauntingly chilling uh music that you've composed um that takes up i mean i would say i mean i'm the guy clicking the button over here so it's about half of half of the music that we listen to in uh blood of my blood is is yours it's you composed it you performed it i think no, 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 you did not I perform did, it? Did okay. Well, this, is what we're, the this is what we're here to find out. Yes, yes. Um, so, first thing I want to ask is just uh, with your respective uh, medium, the two mm -hmm. of you, uh, like where where did this come from? Why? Uh, or What's kind of kept it going for you? Because speaking from experience, like I, I jump around to do a lot of different arts and things. Like I used to be a musician a lot and then i sang and then i you know i tried to do a little more character art like you rebecca and i have a problem with like actually committing to something and getting it going <laughs> but you both seem pretty uh good <laughs> at what you're doing so i'm just curious like uh 
Tell me your tell me your journey with that. Um, let's start with Ted this time. Yeah. Um, thank you. For, I've, I've never been called pretty good before. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, um, I uh, uh, music. I, I I definitely jump around through a lot of different things. But music has been a lot of fun the last few years. And I, one of the things that I love more than anything else. Well, not more than anything else. But one of the things I love the most in creativity is scoring. I love finding the musical language of a story or a narrative or experience and making stuff. So when I did Numenera, I created music for that. When I did Blades, I cre I wrote music for that. Uh, with this one, what was really exciting was Graham had a strong vision. He's always, I mean, Dark Plane, the setting that Graham made has always had such a strong identity. Right. And uh, I was really excited to jump on in on that. And so the person I reached out to is my friend Rob Willis, who is a ridiculously amazing cellist, um, who he and I just... You know, I, I would throw stuff at him, and he would throw throw it back with all these flourishes and embellishments. So he he you know produced the tracks. I um, composed all the the music that was in them. Um, the the longest track, which you use during a lot of the ambient stuff, was sort of was a little bit more collaborative, where I just sent him, okay, these are some chords, these are a few ideas, play around. And so he did a lot with that. Right. The other big inspiration for this particular one, for uh, Blood of My Blood, was the score. What was by what was his name? for The Witch, um, the Ooh. film, which is um, uh, one of Graham's favorites and an amazing yeah. score. Absolutely horrible. God, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's terrible. Like, Bone chilling. Like yes, literally, Rob and I would, we, I remember like we were talking about this at one point late at night and I sent him a couple tracks and both of us were like, yeah, I kind of almost had a panic attack listening to that. <laughs> <laughs> like, this is this like final track where there's just these whispering. It's called the Coven. It's so good. Oh, yeah. It's such an amazing track, but absolutely horrifying. So there, and there may be some more music composed for Blood of My Blood. Um, we'll see what exactly shows up. It'll be fun to write a theme for some different characters. Um, you know, to have them have their own theme. Um, so you know, if you have any ideas for what you know Tiago's theme should be, you, know, you let me know. Well, um, <laughs> I will. We'll talk. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it was fun. Um, so and Rob. Uh, you know, he, he was like, oh, this is sort of like The Witch and also like Arvo Pert, which, you know, he's, I mean, Arvo Pert's an incredible, incredible composer, which is not you know, nowhere near there. But that's sort of a cool thing to be drawing on as well. Anyway, those are some fun things about writing those themes. I love it. I love it. Um, do you have, so, so is there anything that you're working on, like, like now or like for the future besides, like, I mean, you, you know, you, you mentioned that you're kind of doing some, maybe do, like, some extra themes and stuff for the characters. But, well, like, outside for Blood of... My Blood? Yeah, I mean, outside of, like, Ghostlight as, in general. Sure. Like, do you do yes. music for things besides D&D? <laughs> yeah, I, I write musicals, actually. That's my... Um, I, I premiered my first musical in New York in fall of 2019. Uh, which is, yeah, it was a folk musical about Theodore Roosevelt and his relationship with the National Parks. Um, which was designed for outdoor performance. Um, so we sorry, real quick. Yeah, I'm right. sorry. Impartial Pierre, um, could you just bump Ted up like five points, please? On the friendship <laughs> track? Thank, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Please continue. So anyway, so yes, uh, that was Theodore in the Valley was that. We did a Kickstarter for it. It was a lot of fun. Valley. Yeah. So good. It was, it was a gem. Thank you. Is this, Thank can, you. can people listen to it anywhere? Or? Yeah. Um, there are, there's a, I'll, I'll send you some stuff. There's a track. Um, sure. There's like a music video of one of the tracks that we have, and um, uh, yeah, and we released a couple songs as part of the Kickstarter. Um, anyway, so the goal is event, you know, the goal is to take it on tour and perform it in the national parks, like go yeah. to Grand Canyon and, yes. and Yosemite, all these places that he like was, you know, that he has these relationships to. So that would be the dream. Um, and oh then my you know, God, yes. any, anyway, I want to talk. About I love that. it. That, that's one. I'm writing a musical called Tribu, which is the French word for tribe, which is about a tribe of early humans trying to survive a climate disaster. Um, and it's all written in Proto-Indo-European, the earliest known human language. So there's no English in it. Um, it's just like drawing on ancient culture and it's like a dance pantomime piece. Anyway, that's the thing. So I, I've written those and other musicals. That's fantastic. I had no idea, first of all, that you composed musicals. Yeah, yeah that's, that's my that's world huge. a little bit. Uh, my, I, I got my degree in musical theater, and Rebecca, really? you got what was your I, degree I, in? Act, I, you didn't get a degree. I, mm, sorry. I didn't get a degree. <laughs> I couldn't you, afford it. <laughs> what did you get your skills but in, you Rebecca? Learned. Yeah, no, I majored. I did major in music theater. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I thought. Okay. Um, <laughs> regardless, what does um, your piece of paper say? Yeah, what does my piece of paper say? Care this. It um, says I'm poor. <laughs> yeah, right. Mine does too, just subliminally. 
<laughs> yeah, Rebecca doesn't need that shit. Um, too cool for school. I love it. Um, yeah, it's so, too cool. anyway, Ted, I have so many questions for you now, but I'm going to skip past yeah. all of them because yeah. we don't have yeah, we'll talk about some other time. The, I know, Boodle. Yeah. Let's talk about his the, stuff. <laughs> No, no, I want to hear about. I want to hear about your doodles Please. because Rebecca, let me, let me let me start off by giving you a bit of my experience of watching you uh, as an artist because when we when we started uh, childish things on this channel mm -hmm. um, back in last May or something like that. Um, oh God! Uh, I you you had drawn these these characters for us. And then you sent them to me so I could color them and whatnot because I think at the time you didn't have the right technology, maybe. I did not. No, yeah. I did not. So, it was it was all pencil and ink. Right. Like, I, I did not have. Which I mean yeah. is something that I could never do because I'm, well, I mean I never learned that right because I I hmm. kind of learned how to draw and whatnot with digital art. Um, and so anyway kind of working together with you in tandem for those couple mm -hmm. months was fantastic and I loved it. Mm -hmm. um, but j I, I literally watched you get better <laughs> through those <laughs> art, through that artwork. And then next thing I know, you are doing your own digital art and I, I'm just, I'm blown out of the water at what, what you've become <laughs> in one year. <laughs> the, like the talent is off the charts right now. You, Thank I mean, you. talk to me. What's, where when did this change when did or even when did it start i'll stop well talking. i mean no you're fine <laughs> please go on uh no um i uh well i've been drawing basically every day since i was in first grade it was like the one thing i was like super good at because i couldn't do math and so uh <laughs> <laughs> but i was good in art class and i was like i was like in first grade i was like looking at like art colleges and i was determined to become the next picasso sort of nonsense um but uh, I would draw it in class to help me stay focused. Otherwise my attention would go elsewhere. So I would just start doodling on my pages. And then I actually started taking art classes and it got better. But then when I got into college, I decided to major into theater because that was the one that actually offered me the scholarship. And um, my like I just stopped drawing regularly. It got pushed to the back back burner. And like I have never uh, until um, like childish things and until like Emma Carter and Spellbound and all this other stuff, I never let anybody see my artwork. Like yeah. I have literally a, a chest full of drawings that nobody, that I've never seen the light of day. Cause I, I thought nobody wanted to see them. And I thought I wasn't good at drawing. I was like, this is a hobby. It's nothing good. Nobody wants to see this. And, um, but yeah, and then like you guys like were asking for stuff and I was like, I'm actually not that bad at it. Like I like it's it's been a hot minute, but I'm not bad at it. But then I realized when I did the childish things drawings that I was like, I need to learn how to go digital. This is taking way too long. Right. Like each drawing was taking like multiple days. And um so yeah, after childish things, that's when I went out and I I you guys inspired me to go out and buy um, a, a, a laptop with a touchscreen tablet sort of thing so I could start learning how to draw and I've been slowly building since then and slowly figuring it out and um, yeah no I like I, I've also like noticed the change like I've, I've started doing some redraws of stuff I did last year oh. at the beginning of the year and I was like oh my god I can do backgrounds now I understand faces better and like all this stuff and it's just been so much fun and so like I've really started turning the, like and I'm making money off it too, which is nice. And, uh, but yeah, it's uh, like like you and Emma and just uh, just Ghostlight Games and everything. Like this, this is the whole reason why I've uh, started drawing again, and like it reignited my passion for it. Like I was like, I forgot how good this makes me feel. And so yeah, Amazing. I love drawing after our after like D and D sessions and stuff like that, like pitfalls and ponies and stuff. Like I'm, I go and I, like I like draw something that happened, and it's just a good exercise. And so yeah. it's so much fun though. But yeah, it's great. I love your I love your style. It's so fit. It's fits it fit childish things really well. I think mm -hmm. it's you know the stuff that you do for Spellbound for your for your um, uh, Spellbound. Let me just say this real quick, everyone. Spellbound is mm -hmm. not a part of Ghostlight RPGs. Mm -mm. Um, it just happens to have mo like uh, seventy five percent <laughs> of Spellbound is also a part of RP of uh, Ghostlight. RPGs. But anyway, um, for the redheaded stepchild. But step we love child. Spellbound. 
um but yeah your work there is fantastic too so just that's awesome that's awesome i you you're both are very talented at what you do and i hope you keep doing it um, can i ask a question rebecca yes. mm -hmm. um i'm curious so I'm, I'm looking at your stuff because all i've seen has been the pitfalls and pony stuff um, uh -oh. i've just sort of shown up <laughs> Um, but uh, I, I haven't posted I, anything up to date in months. I fell sure, off the sure. Instagram wagon. Sorry. Yeah, no, no, you're good. I'm seeing the uh, this post of uh, Gift of the Goddess from Spelldown. Spell Down, oh, yeah. So freaking cool. I really love it. Um, but my question for you is if you could choose what the next Ghostlight RPG's uh, you know, world was going to be so that you could have the coolest kind of thing to make art of. What genre would it be? You know, would it be it's like fantastic. a vampire romance? Would it be a sci-fi with big slug monsters? You know, what, I think what would it something sci-fi would be awesome. Like something cool. very modern sci-fi, lots of like like techno punk sort of a thing, or like mm. post-apocalyptic. Sure. Um, yeah. Like that would be great because like I've 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 been dogging on myself a lot lately because I'm like I've gotten really good at drawing trees, but I can't draw a chair to save right. my life like, <laughs> I'm like i need to work on drawing modern things and uh but uh yeah i've been i've been seeing a lot of like uh uh like modern artwork for like uh cyberpunk and all that other stuff and i'm like oh, it looks sure. so cool and I, like that's yes. that's something i would definitely love I literally to just looked get over into. to my shelf when you said that and i looked at like three different sci-fi themed you know <laughs> rpgs <laughs> that are sitting over there that i Let's haven't see. looked at in a while <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> yeah that's, that's awesome that's a great that's a great question um along mm -hmm. with that question actually i want to um ask you both as kind of a final question before we get to the challenge the challenge the pokemon challenge yes. uh as a final question to the two of you uh knowing what you know about blood of my blood and pitfalls and ponies if you if you if you were swapped and uh, Ted you were in Pitfalls and Ponies if Rebecca was in Blood of My Blood, what character do you think you would build in that world? Hmm. Ted, what pony? What would your pony power be? What would be your yeah. um? What's it called? Yeah, this, the the oh element of cutie. harmony. Yeah. Oh, your cutie mark. Cutie your, mark. Your... <laughs> I was I was Which about to call it a booty mark, and then I was like, that's not right. That's not well. What it's you're not <laughs> off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Semantics. <laughs> you were about to clarify what a cutie mark is. Not that I, not that I don't know, but mm -hmm. y if but you wouldn't mind clarifying, could you maybe tell us what a cutie mark? <laughs> maybe is? for our viewers. Well, yeah, uh, for the viewers out there, a cutie mark is um, a symbol that appears on the opponent's flank when they found whatever their passion or core value or their. Mm talent is so it's like if they, somebody finds they're really good at at baking and they love baking wedding cakes then like a little wedding cake will appear and usually they'll go into a career somewhat aligned to that and um yeah it's basically just what uh like what what your um uh, uh yeah what your your talent is essentially sure. i might but, make a i might make a pony who would be like um i don't know what color he or she or they would be but the cutie mark would probably be about carpentry carpentry yeah be good at like making maybe chairs maybe houses like mm -hmm. make a big like fancy designer house for somebody and like with a nice birch wood you know you can make just like really nice stuff yes. for people. Mm. just like use it as I'm constantly seeing this character yes i can see me. it <laughs> i can see it i love it uh, that's so that's good. who my Chat, we need a name I'm for ready. we I'm... need a name for Ted's uh carpen carpentry <laughs> Kel... So get to work over there. Hello Shin. Jesus, Jesus Pony. Pony. Jesus Pony. <laughs> yeah, Carpenter. Uh Carpenter. what about you, Pony. Rebecca? I'm if writing you that down. In, if you were in the the cosmic horror uh cult ish world that is blood of my blood. Um let's see, I would probably who trying to think i would probably want to go more of like a sneaky route something more along the lines of like a rogue ish sort of mm -hmm. character and i would probably go along the lines of like probably not like immediate family maybe like somebody who like works for the family like a servant or something sure mm -hmm. and uh more cool. subterfuge i think yeah be the, yeah, well, the real sleuthy yeah put lots of like 
jam up the cogs a lot and just make people's lives harder. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of that already. Lots of red off. herrings. I would just leave red herrings laying around <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> um, okay, fantastic. I love it. So far, we have a we have a points update here. Mm. Thank you, Impartial Pierre. So Rebecca started at 40 due to ties already made, <laughs> and <laughs> earned plus you. 10 for refined uh, for refining her for ref redefining her passion. Yeah, I, I got you, got you, got you. Uh, uh, but uh, Ted came up pretty fast and is sitting at 50 as well due to that last 10 that I appointed him, of course, because. Mm -hmm. Because, I mean, guys, Theodore in yeah. the Valley. I mean, yeah. that's, that's uh, you can't beat I, I will. Um, I will succeed to that. So it looks like it's going to be uh, we're at, so we're it's at a tie a head at head the moment. Is what it is. Uh -oh. So okay. whoever gets more points, it's really whoever knows Pokemon. Okay. <laughs> this so, is so clearly the, the <laughs> best measure. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> I know some of Pokemon. <laughs> well, you have a Snorlax hanging on your wall. I Ted do. does not. So that's... I don't have any Snorlaxes. <laughs> Okay, Ooh, I feel I feel less for, afraid. Uh, Ted for your carpentry pony, Redwood Hammerhoof. Oh, oh that's yes. good. That's, that's also a good, that's good. That's good. That's also a good Tauren name if I was in World of Warcraft. Yeah. With, oh with yeah. The big bull guys. Yeah, yes. for sure. Okay, so here's how this is gonna work. Um, now I uh, have to thank the internet for this. Um, this is a little game. You guys might have, may have played it before. Um, but again, we're celebrating Pokemon Day coming up on Saturday. So yes. this is a game called Pokemon or Medicine. Um, oh, okay. I'm going to say a word, and you have Ooh. to tell me whether it's a Pokemon <laughs> or Medicine. You can't look at chat. Don't look at the chat because, chat, yeah, you're, obvious, you're more than welcome yeah. to play along with us. I encourage you. Do we, do we raise our hand? or? Um, I, I, you know, I will... Uh, or will it go back and forth between us? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll, I'll say it to both of you, and then um, I want you to just be honest. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll count on three, <laughs> two, one, and then I'll ask you, and then at the same time you say whether Pokemon or medicine. Okay. Sounds great. Okay. Yeah. okay. Got it. Got it. All right. And, and Pierre, I'm relying on you to keep track of points. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So, first one. Pokemon or medicine? Genuvia. Genuvia, Pokemon is, or medicine? Isn't that the girl from Princess Diaries? <laughs> <laughs> That's the country, Genovia. <laughs> the country is Genovia. That's good. <laughs> Princess of Genovia. <laughs> so, uh, Genovia, Genovia. All right, ready? Three, two, one. Medicine. Come on. All right. Mm. Rebecca said medicine. <laughs> Ted said Pokemon. That one is medicine. Medicine. Yes! That is yeah. medicine everybody. What does it do? Yeah. What does it do? Yeah, I don't I didn't get that information. It does actually. medicine. Okay. You? Good, good. Um good. So uh let's see, Kell Ocean, Ecat Carter, you both got it right. Congratulations. Um well you're welcome to play the friendship game as well, although I don't think you'll You'll catch up to them with their 50 points. Um, all right. So uh, Rebecca took the lead. Uh, the next one is Tricor. Tricor. Is this a Pokemon or is this a medicine, y'all? Tricor. Is it, it spelled today? with an E at the end or not? It is not. So this T R I C O R. Tricor. Tricor, I choose you. Tricor. That sounds so May convincing. May cause constipation. See, See it's it goes either helping. way. <laughs> God dang it. This is a harder game than I thought. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. Pokemon. Medicine? Okay. Tricor is a medicine. Yes! Rebecca, <laughs> you are up 10 points. See, here's the thing. Someone, uh, my friend Carson is playing... Pokemon recently, and there was one that was like shaped like a tricorn hat or like a pirate ship or something. And I was like, yeah. that it's the it's the tricorn hat Pokemon. That's the one. That's the one. <laughs> there I is guess, a keychain Pokemon, so you're not that far off. Like I think what it is yeah. is that I am like so I have so little faith in modern Pokemon that they I'm like they can take any <laughs> gibberish and make it a Pokemon. Yeah, might as well. Might as well yeah. be. Might right. as well. well. Maybe I'll see if I can go for 100 percent failure on this. No, I'm <laughs> but it's for real. Okay, <laughs> okay. Um, here's the next one. Illumize. Illumize. I l l u m i s e. 
Illumise at your local pharmacy. Illumise, use quick attack. I like coming up with these. Two. <laughs> these I'm loving great. this. Yeah, this is, I'm this loving is really this. Good. This is so good. Some um, weird twisted, uh, like wait, uh, which spelling bee. <laughs> Kalosian told us one of those was cholesterol medicine. I think Tricor. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, because right. Genuvia was diabetes medicine. Thanks, oh, Kalosian. Nice. That's why I've heard of that before. Okay. Mm. Okay, Carter. I want to say medicine, but the past two have been medicine. It's true. <clears throat> Illumise. No. Three, two, one. Pokemon? <laughs> We're switching everything. <laughs> Illumise. Is a Pokemon. Is a Pokemon. Thank you. Yes. Ted, you are 0 for 3. I am going to. Cr I'm crushing this. Oh, I'm so good at this game. It's amazing. <laughs> um, yeah, no worries, Pierre. I see you. I I'm see you. I'm sweating. We'll wait for it. <laughs> um, so, okay, okay, great. Uh, the next one. So, currently, it's. <laughs> Rebecca's got three. Ted it's pretty. Zero. It's pretty. It's very close. Yeah. Yep. I mean, yep. we're, we're, at a certain point, we're just gonna call it here. But, yeah. uh, the, next back, one, yeah. <laughs> the next one is Celebrax. 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 Ask your doctor about Celebrax. Celebrax. Whip attack. <laughs> I feel like Celebrax's attack is like con attack. confetti drop. What's, what kind of Pokemon is Celebrax? It's like a it's a, it's a ball that opens up and confetti falls out uh -huh. and Smash Bros. Right. That's good. And, like the emoji. <laughs> yeah. It's just the emoji. They just drew eyes on it and called it a day. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, three, two, one. Medicine. Medicine. It's medicine. You both got yeah. that one. Woo! One! Oh. <laughs> I am so surprised right now. Like, you have no idea. <laughs> Celebrex it. has one attack. No idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Um, two more. Okay. Okay. Uh, let me pick two of my favorites here. Okay. Domperidone. Don't paradon. Don't paradon. Don't paradon. Either way. You want to spell it? <laughs> D O M P E R I D O N E. Don't paradon. Don't paradon. Don't paradon. Don't paradon. Doug Dimadon. Don't paradon. All right. Three, two, one. Uh, medicine? Um, it is a medicine. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I was so, like, there's no way. I was like, there's no way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's too confusing for a child. And the fact that it's an E at the end <laughs> clinched it for me. Because like Paradon, I was like, right. oh, maybe it's like some sort of like rhinoceros. Like, yeah. Thing. All right. And the final one of the night, Vinblastine. Vinblastine. Oh, Vinblastine. Vinblastine, use blast whip. Why do I keep thinking of You're so good at this. <laughs> use blast whip. Vinblastine, I, like I choose you. I feel like that's how I would be as a Pokemon master. Just use blast the vine thingy. Use the, like, you know, use the thing, thing you always use. Come on, Vinblastine. The Ooh, the chat split on this one. Ooh, that's hard. Pokemon or medicine? Pokemon or medicine? Vinblastine. Three. Two, one. Pokemon. Pokemon. Medicine. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that I was the one that you. actually sounded like a Pokemon because yeah. it yeah. ended with an E. And it's so, got blast in it. So, uh, Ted, you got one point. Yeah. Well, wait for yeah. the Yay! official tally. Hey, we'll wait for the official tally from Impartial yeah. Pierre. Give him a little time think, here to tally up. I mean, you did your best, Rebecca, but you know, the best, the best person will win. You know. Yeah. <laughs> You know, well, some you days know. I just need, I should, I, some days I should have just stayed in bed. Sometimes <laughs> you want to be the very best. Like um, no one like ever no was. One ever was. Uh, the, so yeah, in celebration of Pokemon Day, I realized that we basically just talked about a bunch of medicine because only, <laughs> yeah. one, of those, only one of those was one a Pokemon. One of those was a Pokemon. I, I thought the gag was going to be that they were all medicine. Yeah. I 
I know. I almost did. I almost did pick all medicine, but kill you, mom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, at the so end of the great. night, aren't we all winners? <laughs> Thank you, E.K. So, Impartial Pierre came with our tally. Yes. Brrr, Ted has 55 points. Woo. Rebecca has 70 points. <laughs> so, 70. Oh, yeah, uh, beat that so, pre-existing intimate relationship. You know, yeah. I'm, you I'm know, glad that you it know, ended this hard to beat. You know. <laughs> I'm going to have to but prove listen, myself over time. <laughs> there will be a retally after I listen to Theodore in the Valley. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> um, fantastic. So, uh, I think this is a good place for us to call it a night for this first half of the green room. Now, I'm gonna be coming back uh, in the second half here to be painting. I'm gonna be painting. Yeah, can uh, we see what you're painting? Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna be painting Ant Man. Ooh, that's yeah. Uh, oh, nice. Right there. He's on a coin. He's on a quarter. <laughs> So is he for a specific miniatures game? Is that, you yeah. know, wh wh where do you get your minis from? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I, usually, you know, I paint all kinds of D&D &D minis usually, but um, the last few that I've painted on the stream have been uh, from uh, Marvel United. Oh, Red Skull, nice. So nice. Um, and so, uh, and I'm not going to show That's Captain America because nice he's not done yet. <laughs> <I'll wait. laughs> but, um, I understand. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, they have been, they're from a, a game called... Marvel United. There's Captain Marvel. Oh, that looks really good. Yeah, it's wow. great. See, you're so good at this. Like, I can't paint to save my life. Like, especially something that tiny. Yeah. Like, I can't even paint a at tree. All, or? I don't airbrush. I want to. I need yeah. an airbrush to start, really. Oh. It looks so good, though. Thank yeah, you. Awesome, man. Thank you. It's really sweet. Um. So, yeah, I... um. Uh, yeah, Marvel United. It's a it was a Kickstarter that's going to retail stores later this year. But uh, cool. I yeah, I backed the Kickstarter and I have 10, eight, eight to ten figures there. Um, and I'm getting like seventy more <laughs> in March. Whoa. Whoa, dude! Yeah, yeah, we're gonna be painting these Bet. for the next year. Seventy. Perhaps yes. Longer. Yes. Um, and I, uh, so it's kind of the obvious question, but what's the, I mean, who who's your person in the MCU? Like, who's your? Oh yeah. Well, I know that. Gal, okay, or... here's the thing. I know I have Iron Man all behind <laughs> me. That's um, true. Yeah, I, he's I up have and a, down. I had this collection of Iron Man action figures from when I was a kid, and I just haven't really uh -huh. been able to let them go. I actually had a much larger collection that I um. So I had a large collection of Marvel Legends action figures that I sold. Hmm. Uh, to buy my wife's uh, engagement ring, um, so uh, gift to the magi. It was yeah, <laughs> yeah, um, and so I had to get rid Love. of most of them. But um, my favorite's actually Spider Man. It's lame. Yeah, it's lame. It's so hard to beat, man. It's, How it's do you not, just got the oh, heart? Okay, he's just it's nice. not lame because he's super fun and cool. He has all the best lines. His storylines are fantastic. His villains are fun and creative yeah. and very layered. And yeah, yeah he has the he best has, villains. For sure. He has the best villains. He's so big good. Wheel. And yeah. he's big, one of those. He's one of those heroes. <laughs> <laughs> he's one of those heroes Todd that he King. can pop up and he can pop <laughs> up in any comic book and nobody thinks twice about it they're just like oh yeah spider-man's here because yeah, he's like Ooh. he's one of the flagship characters oh, like, yeah. yeah he's so awesome no he's the mm -hmm. boy next door that's so true yeah, um, yeah, that's great. yeah pierre thanks so much for being our uh our uh what do you call it uh arbiter arbiter yeah, yeah couldn't have done it without you <laughs> yeah. honestly um thanks to uh the chat for participating in our pokemon off um so yeah, um, I'm gonna take a quick break, um, say goodbye to these guys, um, and during the break, you'll be able to see some of uh, their work uh, from the streams last week. Um, and when I come back, I'll be uh, I'll be chatting with y'all and painting some Ant Man. So uh, stick around for that. Um, Thanks for having us. Yeah, Justin. it's been so Seriously. much fun. Thank you That's so much jam. for coming Love on. It. Great to chat with all you guys as well in the chat. It was nice meeting really you, Ted. Good. Oh my gosh, <laughs> such a pleasure. I'm excited for us to hang more and play more games whenever that happens. Absolutely. Yes. Know. Let's do yeah. it. Let's do it. We'll be right back. Bye. Bye. So you see all of the princesses <laughs> standing there, uh, Star Whistle. What do you do? <laughs> Uh, Star Whistle, uh, she, she walks up to them and, you know, kind of, kind of gives herself a little pat down on her dress because she's been standing for a while and, mm -hmm. uh, she just gives a, a very, very sweet bow and she's just like, um, I gotta say, I'm as pleased as punch to be here. It's such an honor to meet all of you finally. 
Uh, thank you. Thank you, Star Whistle. We are so happy to have you at the gala, says Princess Celestia, and Luna nods as well. And Princess Twilight steps forward and says, Oh, Star Whistle, it's so nice to see you again. Uh, Celestia, Luna, this is the pony I told you about. One of the, the five ponies that helped us to pet sit our pets when we had to go on that super secret mission. Uh, oh, says Celestia. Well, then I am even more pleased to welcome you to our palace. If there's anything that we can uh, do to help you or answer any of your questions, please let us know. I do hope that you will stick around for my speech that I will be giving here in just a few moments. Oh, I, I could, I can imagine wanting anything more. You certainly know how to throw one heck of a, a, a barn burner here. This is one fancy shindig you got going on. I don't think I've ever seen something so shiny. And they all giggle and Twilight says, oh yeah, you would really get along with Applejack. <laughs> I've got to introduce <laughs> you two again. <laughs> um, and Star Whistle, you can hear some ponies behind you kind of getting restless for their turn with the princesses. Oh, oh, uh, sorry. Uh, uh, well, um, uh, it was so nice meeting you and I, I, I hope someday maybe I can, I can return the favor of the ticket to the gala with some tickets to a concert. <laughs> That would be wonderful. And Luna says, yes, I, I love music and would love to see one of your concerts, Star Whistle. I've heard wonderful things about you. Oh, well, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna get out of the way. I, I, I feel like I'm, 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 I'm eating up a whole lot of your time. I'm just, I'm just gonna go get something to nibble on at the table. <laughs> it, it, was no, it was so nice meeting all of you though. Pleasure to meet you. I'm just gonna wander off. <laughs> Does she wander to where Lucky Charm and Gavel and Justice are at the snack table? Yes. She needs some punch. She's got like cotton mouth after talking to them. She's just <laughs> like, oh my God. Like <laughs> <laughs> to the top deck of the ship and you feel yourself begin to climb the rigging. As you do, you hear a couple people shout up at you, um, but you have no ability to turn your attention to them and you are climbing, climbing, climbing up to the crow's nest. Uh, you know that there would be someone stationed up at the crow's nest. Um, and so uh, you maybe <laughs> bide your time for the moment when this person realizes that someone's climbing up. Um, and as you do, uh, your breath is short. Uh, you feel just all of your muscles tensing, begin to ache from, uh, from contracting. Mm -hmm. Any any particular thing you'd like to attempt? You know, you don't have, <laughs> you don't yeah, have. I'm, uh, I'm, I don't have full control. Um, right, right. But you have some control. You could exert yourself to regain control. Yes. Um, so I, have I reached the crow's nest yet, or am I below Not quite. where? Okay. Uh, but you, we can also cut ahead to when you've reached it. It's up to you. Sure, sure. No, I um. Uh, what I want to do is, as I'm reaching the crow's nest, I think you know whatever is inside me wants to get into a position. I assume where I can subdue whoever's in the crow's nest or like make sure that they don't stop me from whatever I'm about to do. What I'm going to try and do is just slam my fist against the bottom of the crow's nest to warn the person that I am coming. Um, yeah, that's what, that's what I'm going to try to do. I don't know if I can okay, great. Uh, successfully do it. Um, make a uh, make an athletics check as you okay. exert your body to uh, get a hold of itself. Yeah. That's a 21. Okay. You manage to uh, pull yourself into control, and mm -hmm. you not only are able to slam on the bottom of the crow's nest, funk, uh, and startling, seemingly startling from sleep, <laughs> the person who is up there, um, and uh, he says, oh, uh, "What is it?" And you now have uh, control of your body, as you as you dangle there, holding on to the rigging. Uh huh. Um, I'm I'm going to say. Uh in a sort of confused maybe somewhat like drunken like faux drunken voice here <laughs> and i thought i saw a storm coming uh cl some clouds in that direction i thought you should pay attention <sighs> well leave my business to me and you see the head kind of look over the crow's nest down at you uh and realize you're oh, i'm very sorry very sorry sir i didn't mean it's all right. You're right. You do your work. I... Can I do anything for you? 
I, no, I, no, I, nothing at all. I, you've got to, and I look down and at my vision vertigo is <laughs> higher than I'm used to. So I'm like, if you maybe had rope for me, I'd, this high. Sure. I, I'm so sorry, sir. And he'll kind of pull out uh, a coil and uh, let it down so that you can, and, and do, do you want him to like, tie you to the rope for security if, or yeah if he could sort of belay me you know yeah. from above yeah great weirdly. yeah he can uh, do uh, that uh, and he says he says good luck sir take it easy on the drink there thank you and i i, I certainly shall i just not used to boats Welcome back. Oh boy. What a good interview. I liked that. I hope you guys enjoyed that first half of the show tonight. Um, you know, I was, I didn't do any painting like I usually, well, like I have the last two weeks. Um, but I just, I really wanted to focus on just like talking to the people, you know? And I think, I don't know, I think it went a little better because of that. So. I may just I may just uh, do the painting in the second half of the stream if that's okay with everybody else. Um, it's just it's I found it's very hard to like <laughs> focus on both things at once. Um, yeah, I wanted to. <laughs> so I'm I'm scared. I'm a little worried. Those of you who've been watching for a while know that um, Egbert is my. Uh, child I guess um and he is uh a Tamagotchi and he's right here and so this week he uh well like honestly in the last two weeks he's grown from a baby into a child a cute little guy into like um some sort of like a teenage like bell sprout looking thing into a full-grown man i haven't i was planning on showing you guys what he looks like but now he's doing this weird thing and i i think he might be dying i don't know what's happening <laughs> so i'm gonna switch here let's switch over to the other i know i'm gonna give you proof he's alive i think he i don't know what this means and i don't know where the instructions are <laughs> um so here we go let's try Let's try doing this. Um, okay. Let me adjust this real quick. So, well, hang on. Let me get the light better. Here we go. Let's try that right there. Um, so, he's doing this weird... Hang on, oh, come on. Get more in focus. Well... Okay, I'm not going to be able to get that in focus right now, but the point is, <laughs> um, <laughs> I know, but I, I don't consider him my child. He is my pet. Tamagotchis are pets. Um, have I told him that I love him? Am I supposed to? <laughs> I, I didn't think that that's, I thought he was a little digital guy who didn't need love and he just needed me to feed him mushrooms. Anyway, he's doing like a weird dance. I can't push any buttons. Is the sad thing. Like the but like nothing I push is making anything change, which concerns me. Um, but yeah, hopefully he's just in like a gr angry mood, and then <laughs> uh. Yeah, no, I'll tell the people in my life that I love him. Look, I, I'm i glad Kaloshin sent me this Tamagotchi, but um, I I think it's time that I... <gasps> oh, no, you guys, I think he died. <laughs> Wait a second. What's happening? What is that? 
You guys, he's dead. He's dead. It's official. He died. I swear to God, we took care of him every day. That's a cross on a gravestone. That's a cross on a gravestone. What did I do wrong? I fed him. I gave him candy. <sighs> he just died on stream. He had to go and do that to me. This little... <laughs> What is there something floating above the is that like a kite? What is that floating up there? There's no way I can get this in focus by the way. Let's try No, nothing Um, I know chats mad at me. I get it. It's okay It's gonna be okay because now he's gonna be reborn into a new Tamagotchi the average lifespan of an original Tamagotchi is between 12 and 25 days. Thank you, Pierre. Oh my gosh. I kept him alive for... When was our first stream? That was... Seven... <laughs> seven... It's 14 days ago, right? I kept him alive for 14 days. It's not bad. There's no way to play with him. <sighs> Emma... <laughs> there's, there's no way to... There's nothing to do. Like, you look at the instructions, it's just like, feed him and give him candy. Feed him, give him candy. Clean up his poop. Those are the three things that I do in the day. That's all. That's the, that's the only thing that the instructions at the top me to do. <laughs> I am very upset. <laughs> I killed a pet that I had... Listen, here's the truth, okay? Deanna and I... We got up in the morning and the first thing I would do is go clean up his poop and feed him breakfast I'm not joking he felt like a pet to me so that's what I did and now to know that he just died on on stream like that's so sad he was born on the stream he died on the stream it's very true like I mean you guys can see kind of um, the like uh, gravestone the little cross on the grave <laughs> I never got to show you I never got to show you him as a full grown man which was my favorite version of him Egbert we love you yeah we'll, we'll honor Egbert here um, he was a full grown man Egbert's dead babe <laughs> Deanna just walked in and gasped <laughs> he's dead look it's a cross with a gravestone don't push any buttons though I know, we fed him, we did everything right, but apparently you have to love him. I know, he was a Benjamin Button. <laughs> Deanna said he was a Benjamin Button. <laughs> yeah. So, well, I'm gonna, so here's what's gonna happen. Egbert, I'm going to send him to somebody else one of the other members of Ghost Light RPGs, and let's see how long they can keep him alive. Or he'll be reborn into somebody new. You don't have to name him Egbert again. Anyway, that was a bit of excitement. I, guys, was not expecting that. I was expecting to show you this little man that he became because he had a little, like, Fu Manchu mustache, and, like, he was always, like, mm, angry. Uh, it was cute. Anyway. Let's do some painting. You guys want to paint? All right, let's try and not make this. Okay, good. My hands are there. I have my hands. Those are not not required, but definitely helpful with mini painting. Uh, yeah, great start to the second half. <laughs> Thanks, Rebecca. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Uh, however, it doesn't help to know the, uh, the longest Tamagotchi. 145 days! 140, who, how? I just, how? Is it, like, about, like, the time that you feed them? Because I fed him as soon as I woke up. He slept forever. He slept a long time. And now, he'll sleep forever more. <laughs> All right. So, folks, we have Ant-Man. Uh, let's refocus that little guy. Come on, focus for me. 
Oh, that's the problem. I see. Hang on. Give me one second, people. Let me adjust something. <laughs> okay. Now let's try again. There we go. So, um, Ant-Man is who we're painting tonight. Um, it's going to be mostly blacks and red with some silver in there going primarily based on the uh, the costume the uh, the uniform from the the Paul Rudd film um, just because that's kind of the one that they have printed on the, the character here it seems to be the the uh, suit he's wearing at the moment got a little gray gonna get some black Whoop. Lots of black. Um, great. Favorite Paul Rudd movie? Solid question. What are some of the Paul Rudd movies that I like? Because I, there's a lot. Um, oh boy. Now, hang on. <laughs> I gotta think about this for a second. Um, I feel like I'm gonna forget all of my favorite ones right now. <laughs> um, oh, and real quick, I need to pull up uh, this image that I wanted to use to look off of. Um, favorite Paul Rudd movie? Let's see. There's, um, what's that movie that he's in on Netflix where he goes on the road trip with the kid and like I think like Selena Gomez is in it, which makes it sound like not a good movie, <laughs> but it's a very good movie. Have you guys seen that one? Oh yeah, Forty Year Old Virgin, or is it? It's called Forty Something. Dinner for schmuck. Dinner with schmucks. Yes, Wanderlust. Real good stuff. Um, I honestly love. Uh, uh, not Little Miss Sunshine. I don't... Was he... He wasn't in Little Miss Sunshine, was he? Um, but I guess that does sound kind of familiar to what I'm... What I was talking about there. So I can see the... Little Miss Sunshine is one of my favorite movies of all time, though. Um, that's got... Uh, who's in that? Steve Carell. Steve Carell? <laughs> Wait. Is Steve Carell in that? Fundamentals of Caring. Thank you, Rebecca Munoz. Um, yes. Fundamentals of Caring. Oh, he was... Are we talking about Steve Carell or Paul Rudd now? <laughs> In Little Miss Sunshine. <laughs> um, yes. The Fundamentals of Caring was one of those movies where, like, I didn't expect it to be so good. And he gives a performance that's just fantastic in it. Um... Steve was the dad and Paul Rudd. I don't know. Somebody look this up. I'm, I'm busy. <laughs> uh, what else do I love? I love uh, Paul Rudd in um, a Clueless. I love him in Clueless. I love him in... Uh, you're, you think you're wrong. Okay. I feel like I'm forgetting all my favorite Paul Rudd movies now. I keep thinking of Ben Stiller movies instead. Like Dodgeball. Dodgeball is one of my favorite movies too. Oh boy. You know why I love Paul Rudd so much? It's because he's such a vocal Chiefs fan. And so am I. And I just love him for that. He's from my hometown. He's from Kansas City here. So, again, so much to love about the man. Um, what's one of those, like, zany films that he did? Like, he's got a wacky film. Like, a real wacky one, right? I know, I mean, yeah, there's Dinner for Schmucks. I mean, I guess he's in Anchorman. So, his performance in that is definitely pretty wacky. Role Models, yeah! Yeah! That was a good one. I like role models. I like the part where they go uh, to the uh, 
LARPing place. <laughs> the LARPing place. I've never been LARPing. Has anybody been LARPing? I feel like it's something I would legitimately enjoy doing, actually. I just, uh, I've never done it. I've never done it. Hang on, Pierre, let's see what you said there. 40-something is Paul Rudd and Judd Apatow's wife. They're married. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Um, you're talking about... Um, what is her name? Leslie? Leslie something. Uh, and Wanderlust. Yeah, I do love Wanderlust. If I had to pick a foam weapon... <laughs> Um, what is, what is Amped Guard? Is that a LARP thing? If I had to pick a, if I had to pick a weapon for LARPing, I mean, can you just have, like, anything you want? Like, is that the deal? Like, you just kind of make it yourself? Because I would pick, um, I don't know, like, do you go with projectile weapons? Or do you go with... Is it better to do, uh, like, melee weapons? Because, look, my brother and my cousin and I used to, like, nonstop just play with, like, nerf swords. Because nerf swords were more fun than nerf guns. Because with nerf guns, you shoot the thing, and you have to go pick up the, the darts. <laughs> and it's like, ah, oh, come on. Um, and typically we miss anyway. Uh, but nerf swords and like lightsabers and all that kind of stuff and just like you know the the Christmas wrapping paper that you um, you know take the tube from and make it a make it a sword those were always like the best things we had like we had like intense duels um, up in like our bedroom and we I would get like so sweaty because we would just, like, be up there and, like, get, like, I mean, it was, like, Fight Club. It was Fight Club. I had Fight Club. And I talked about Fight Club, which means I'm now kicked out of Fight Club. What if Paul Rudd was in Fight Club? What craziness, right? What craziness. All right. We're going to make this black. I'm not sure what color this one's should be under here but i'm just gonna make it black that makes sense to me he's wearing a big old like wetsuit <clears throat> let's see so yeah basic medieval weapons i would say then like i would just go with like i mean it's probably boring but i would go with just, like a sword and a shield i want a shield because there's nothing that feels quite so badass as when you like can like block shield and then just like push it off and swing at somebody else oh that's fun you know what i take it back i want a battle axe Ner nerf made this cool battle axe it had these like yellow blades on it oh my gosh we would like smack each other with that thing um it was crazy amped guard uh we're sanctioned role playing with towns having multiple factions what I used to stab a lot. Pierre, why are you the coolest person? Uh, recreated war scenarios and parks with different factions. That's so cool. That is so cool. I um, love that. I love that is what I'm trying to say to you right now. Um, that's so cool. I, I would love to do something like that. Is that still a thing? Or do you think it turned into just kind of like LARPing. It's probably still a thing, right? Can I find a, a faction near me? Do they still do it in masks? Probably not. Um, Red Munoz, do my brothers play TTRPG? So I have, I have one brother and I have one sister and I have, uh, the, my cousin is the one I was talking about. We would like smack each other with <laughs> nerf weapons my cousin and my my little brother um but yes my my little brother does play 
TTRPGs. Um, we bond over it quite frequently, actually. Um, he is a young DM himself. I've tried to get him as a guest on multiple things, but it just never really works out. <laughs> but yeah, he's great. He's uh, 10 years younger than me. And in no time, I'm sure he will surpass me as the greatest DM ever made. The title which I currently hold. So, sorry, everyone else out there. I like Ant-Man here because there's a lot of black and that just makes it easier. Darker colors, mm, so much easier to hide mistakes. Gotta love that. Yeah, he's 10 years younger. I have a sister who is two years older, really a year and a half, I suppose, older. Um, but yeah. She does not play role-playing games. Uh, I mean, at least she hasn't told me if she does. She might have a secret life of doing so, which would be so cool. <laughs> I have played, uh, I have played a one-shot with my family before. We went to Vegas uh, one time, and. We, I decided to kind of do a one shot uh, of, and I made it like our adventures in Vegas. <laughs> so like the one shot started out and we were in the hotel room that we were in playing in that moment. And, um, and then it was like, you know, something goes awry and, and then uh, like there's actual, you know, monsters invading the strip and, it's it was fun it was cool it was a lot of fun um should this be <clears throat> look we're both pretty cool impartial pierre you you may be impartial but no i guess i'm impartial in that moment wait a second what does impartial mean <laughs> um Get this pulled up. I need to figure out what color his shins should be. I usually don't care so much, but I found that it's easier to reference sometimes when I'm doing this, so I don't actually have to think and make decisions. I can just mindlessly paint. <laughs> Which makes for a for an easier stream, I find. A little word to the wise for anyone out there making your own paint stream. Okay, so we can see how he's just got a bunch of black ink on him. So that's a lot of the shadows. We're going to come back in with some stuff to make him pop later. But... I think that's pretty solid. All the black is there. I think. Let me go over him one more time here and double check. That's gonna be red. That's gonna be red. That's gonna be silver. That's. Yeah, we got the black there. Pretty satisfied with that for now. Okay. So. Uh, let's see. Just clean off this brush and then. Um, thoughts on the new Spider Man movie? Oh, okay. I'm glad you brought this up, actually. I am. <laughs> I have a lot of thoughts. So the new Spider-Man movie, if you haven't heard, and this isn't really a spoiler, I don't think, it's more of a rumor. There's a, 
unofficial rumor that it's going to include, you know, Tobey Maguire, Andrew Garfield, Spider-Man's. Um, they've already confirmed that Jamie Foxx will be reprising his role as Electro, but it's like a different version of Electro, apparently. And I think maybe Alfred Molina is coming back as Doc Ock, which is co cool, but I'm just not... Here's the thing. I thought they found such a good thing with Tom Holland, with with these movies, um, and like the, the I don't know, just the, the new vibe that they had given off. I just, I worry that doing any kind of lasting, and I'm not saying it'd be lasting either, but any kind of lasting multiverse, any kind of multiverse uh, thing in the movie is just going to make it feel, I don't know, dis, disgenuine, ingenuine, un, un, not genuine, <laughs> uh, Yeah, yeah. Um, you haven't seen any of the Holland Spider-Man movies? Oh, Pierre, let's have a watch party. Should we have a watch party and watch Spider-Man? Because you don't want to do that with me because I would just talk the whole way through and tell you guys every moment that I think is awesome. Um, <laughs> uh, the... Yeah, I, I'm a, like, like you found out earlier in the broadcast. The broadcast? God, why do I keep calling things weird things? Earlier in the stream, <laughs> you found out that I have a big Spider-Man fan, which I am. Um, I've read, you know, I've read all the comics going back to 1998. Um, I think is when I started. Not, not literally that year, but I went back and read stuff. Um, anyway, but I, I, I love, you know. I love uh, Spider-Man and and the Tom Holland ones are definitely my favorite, just because they 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 feel the most real, uh, like high school experience, and um, which is always kind of where I love Peter Parker being, personally. So, uh, and I think they've just captured so much. You know, Tom has captured so much of the you know just the who who Peter is. I love it. I love the Queens thing. It's good. Um, yeah, you haven't seen any Marvel movies after Thor. Okay, all right, that's fine. I understand. I mean, you know, if they're not for you, they're not for you. Nothing wrong with that. You've seen the Avengers. You've seen Ant Man, Guardians of the Galaxy, Black Panther. Okay, so that's a, that's a good, it's a good chunk of movies there. That's a lot of them. Uh, let's go ahead and get some of this. I'm gonna go ahead and paint the underside of this. Uh, I need a bigger paintbrush. What am I doing? Um, I'm gonna paint the the bottom of this uh, coin uh, black, just so it's darker when I later paint on it. I'm trying to get this big brush and go at go to town here. Yeah, we definitely need to watch party. I agree. Get under here um we should do that so anyway what was i saying earlier uh spider-man i mean overall i have faith in marvel they haven't not, they haven't let me down yet and i'm i'm you know i'm thinking it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine all right so we just got the whole dark side under there which obviously i'm not gonna keep it that way i'm just toning it for now so that it Later when I get it, it's just, it's got a little more shadow to it than the upper side. It's like an open Oreo. A reverse Oreo. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of gatekeepers by any means. That's, it's really turned me off of Star Wars <clears throat> uh, lately, you know. I'm a big fan of just letting things be the way they are. You know, enjoy what you want and, you know, whatever. But, and I, I hope that me talking about Marvel like this doesn't come off as gatekeeping to anybody. I, you know, it, it, I'm, not, I'm not saying anything bad about the other movies. I think there's some really great stuff about the other movies. I just love the Tom Holland ones the best. Um, 
But yeah, I saw a. That's what I was gonna say. Um, today, Tom Holland and some of the one of the other actors I think from the movie tweeted uh, fake movie titles for the movie, such as Spider Man Phone Home, uh, Spider Man Home Wrecker, um, which you know. They haven't announced the title for the movie. It's supposed to be coming out in December. I assume they'll probably push it back because of COVID reasons. Um, but we'll see. All right. Let's see. We gotta get to. The, we gotta move on to the next part of this here. Um, I think we're gonna go with the red. Let's go get some red in here. And I think maybe I'm crazy. I think I'm just gonna keep it this regular red. This is this is called bloody red. Um, I think I'm just going to keep this as it is. Yeah, you should totally watch. You should totally watch the Marvel movies together. It's a great marathon, especially during quarantine. Uh, my wife, uh, Deanna, and I, we um, we had never watched the Fast and the Furious movies. And so um, my brother-in-law is like a huge fan of them. And uh, I always, I like... I never know what to say to him whenever we talk about it. So I was like, I got to watch these movies. So we finally started watching them and they actually have gotten good. I mean, I, I don't want to say good, but I, there's something to really like about them. Like we're on number six right now. So it's like definitely like 2013 and forward. They've got, I mean, they're ridiculous, but they're fun. They're fun movies. There's, there's a bit of like, great humor there they added some really good um you know story elements to them and i don't know I, I yeah i think i think they're pretty cool they're pretty fun um but i never would have thought i would have thought that i never would have thought i would have thought that yeah i said what i said uh okay maybe that is a little too bright let's let's tone it down just a little bit here very orange let's get some sort of darker let's do like a drop of the dragon red here um but yeah so fast and the furious is you know i don't hate it as much as i thought I would and I didn't expect to hate it I guess I just I didn't expect to enjoy it as much as I did um I have thoughts I never thought think yeah yeah thank you thank you Peter. You, you get me you know what I'm saying um all right yeah that's a little better we're gonna have to do a couple coats of this red because it is not gonna go down without a fight um, I also saw news today that DC is greenlighting a uh, Blue Beetle movie for, you know, the DCEU or whatever they're calling themselves now, which uh, which is great. I think that's awesome. If anybody doesn't know the Blue Beetle in the DC universe, he's, um, well, there's a couple different iterations of the character, but the, the current one and the one that they're basing the movie off of is, uh, is a young uh, Mexican-American teenage uh boy named jaime reyes uh and the so the, it's the first i mean hang on let me think about this for a second yeah i think it's the first feature like superhero film to uh to star a you know a, a mexican-american uh character which is awesome um and it's also being uh, helmed by a Latino director and written by a Latino uh, writer. So just lots of uh, lots of diversity coming from over there. And I, I'm liking it a lot. Not that Marvel's not doing that. It's not a competition. Um, but yeah, just exciting stuff. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that, Red Munoz. The, um, uh, they cast uh, a Latina Supergirl as well which is so cool not something i thought you know i'd ever see necessarily um but super cool super cool 
for Supergirl. You know, I don't know too much about Supergirl. I uh, I honestly don't know too much about DC Comics, to be honest. But I love Young Justice, uh, the animated show. So that's something that I... That's why I know Blue Beetle. Um, I read a lot of Batman growing up, and I still catch some Batman now, but I don't uh, know too much more in DC other than that. Okay. So right now we got it kind of this like brownish red going. It looks brighter in the camera than it actually is on here, but this is just a uh, this is just the shadows here. Gonna I'm gonna go over it again with some highlights and stuff in a little bit. This may be the first figure that I actually fin start and finish on stream. <laughs> uh, hopefully, we'll see. I think I I think I'm on track to to at least get through. Like I mean, I might not get time to detail, but yeah, we'll see. Um. Yeah, yeah. Blue Beetle. I think yeah, I think you're right. He was in the uh Injustice game. I uh rented that game. I with most fighting games, I don't really play too often. Like Mortal Kombat and stuff like that, I would I usually rent and then I play through the whole campaign as far as I can before I have to return it the next day. That's what I would do when I was a kid. <laughs> Because I was like, I don't, I don't have anybody to fight. I don't, I don't have any friends. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna uh, play through the campaign and fight all the bad guys I can, and then return it to Blockbuster. R.I.P. R.I.P. Blockbuster. Um. Uh. Yeah. I, it was more sad than I. Um, I'm, I'm joking, really. I, I, I had friends. <laughs> I had friends. Come on, I had friends. <laughs> Awkward silence. Uh. <laughs> so yeah, let's see. Okay, that's what we got going so far. Got a little red, a little flashes of red in there. Think. Oh, the knee pads. We got to do the knee pads. Knee pads. This is messy. This is a quick, a quick and dirty paint job here. But I'm gonna go through and detail it later. Just trying to get paint on the mini. Sometimes that's more important than anything else. Is <laughs> just uh. Just getting it done. I, I, I tend to have analysis paralysis a lot when it comes to picking colors and blending and mixing and, ooh, no, that doesn't look right. Let me try again. And sometimes you just got to, like, just do it. Just do it. And, if it, you know, make it look how you want it to look as you go. As you go, y'all. This has been Inspirational Messages with Justin. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. That and to teach you about medicines and Pokemon. Okay. So that is maybe a little, a little too brown. I want some some of that darkness, but we gotta bring in more of the poppy light now. Let's see what contrasts the yellow if I've mixed a little more blue perhaps uh, I'm going out on a limb here guys I you think you think you think someone who's painted this much would know how to blend colors better but you know sometimes I don't Ooh, too much 
too much blue. Too much blue. Ah. Can you even see what I'm doing? Oh, I guess you can. Cool. Okay, well, that's not bad. Did a bit there. This is therapeutic to watch. Hey, I'm glad. It's therapeutic to do. It really is. Oh, man. So yeah, Pokemon Day on Saturday. Who's celebrating? Watching that Post Malone concert, anybody? I don't even know where to watch it. I'm sure it's all gonna be all over all over online. But is he gonna like is he gonna do the the theme song? Is he gonna do the the big one? I won't sing it here for obvious reasons, but uh but know that I'm singing it in my head, as I'm sure you are. Um, cool. Yeah, that red is going to be nicer. Ooh, look at his booty. Look at that red booty. <laughs> I can't. I can't sing it. Um, but yeah, so I, um, really wanted to run a Pokemon, uh, a RPG on, on the stream, actually. It's been one of my kind of, uh, what's the word? One of my kind of like go-to ideas, I suppose. Uh, where basically, yeah, yeah, to, to where catching Pokemon is the kind of the quest. And so um, I don't know if anybody listens to 20-sided um, stories, 20-sided stories on um, it's a podcast. Um, fantastic, really fun, improvised, long form improvised, uh, you know, role playing. Um, but they did a, a Pokemon RPG that was fantastic and really inspired me to like want to do my own. Um, so that is something I will eventually do, maybe on <laughs> on stream. Although I don't know legalities. Like I think, technically speaking, it, it'd be it would be a uh, what do you call it? Uh, parody but I don't know for sure so we could make our own universe and just call it um, Digimon yeah that hasn't been taken right Digimon hasn't been taken okay uh, time to do a check alright we got right there so we've got our boy here the reds coming along look at those thigh pads those are nice so yeah the reds coming in there pretty good digimon is better than pokemon Ooh, chat is having a fight chat fight um I uh, I have to th I here's the thing. I know more Pokemon. <laughs> I didn't get into Digimon until I was older and then I only watched a few seasons and I was like, "Oh, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good." But I didn't really give it a full chance, I think. So I can't speak exactly to how good Digimon is, but I will say I do love Pokemon and have rewatched the original anime a good number of times. Which honestly is always like a little bit of a letdown. <laughs> Has anybody like got just get to the end of the of the original anime? Like uh, when I say original I mean like the I don't know. I don't know how to define it, but you know before they switch regions, I suppose. You know. Like, basically, when they go to, like, Orange Islands and all that stuff. 
Um, it just like ends because it doesn't end, I guess is the thing, right? They keep it alive and it's still going now. But I wanted like a conclusion. <laughs> I wanted some sort of a, yeah. Ecat Carter, I see you. I see what you're saying. And I, I do agree with that. As far as the shows go, Digimon is the superior show. It is. Um, there's higher stakes and overall just, you're right, a less formulaic plot. So, yeah, you're right. You've convinced me. Until Pokemon gives me something of that quality, I mean, what can I say? That being said, actually, the Digimon movie is really good, too. Uh, I was going to say, Pokemon the movie is, like, one of my favorites. <laughs> it's great. Okay, guys, let's see. We're going to... They're still making a movie about the original Digidestin, and they're aging? They are? Okay, you and I are going to talk about this sometime, because I need to watch these. I need to find out where to, where to access them. I'm just going to get these a little bit of red right here. Boop. Boop. A little red. Yeah, Pierre? You want to do some Pokemon? That'd be fantastic. Listen. That'd be fantastic. I mean... We're pretty loaded right now, so this would be in the far future. Um, and I'm probably not going to be starting any long-time campaigns outside of this anytime soon. But but yeah, I mean, even if it's just like a one-shot, that'd be fun. That'd be fun to do. We should totally play. We should play. What would be the concept? Because I've thought about it a little bit, and I think it'd be like... You know, everybody starts as, uh, here's the thing. I have to go first generation because that's really all I know with Pokemon. Um, uh, Pokemon figure painting. If you can find me some Pokemon figures, I will paint the hell out of them. Um, that'd be fan. I, I don't know where to find cool Pokemon figures that aren't already painted. I guess I'd strip the paint and then repaint them, but it seems kind of. I don't know, <laughs> uh, but um, that isn't all about battling or catching. Yeah, yeah, just like a, a campaign where it's like the backdrop is you're in a world of Pokemon. Um, I mean, there'd be some battling, I think, uh, but it would mostly be about exploration, exploration, and helping helping Pokemon and helping people and their Pokemon. And like solving mysteries about Pokemon, like, like the uh, what's the name of this? What's the name of the town that they go to with the like haunted stuff? You know what I'm talking about? Please, please get a bit out there, Pierre. Go for it. Hit me, hit me. What's your ideas? Because this is coming to fruition, and we're gonna make it happen, my friends. Uh, okay, it's time for a lighter, a lighter red. So I'm going to add just a little bit of white there. And and we are good to go. Lavender Town. Lavender Town, thank you. Yes, with like... Um, is it Agatha? Or something like that. No, Agatha's the psychic one, right? I don't know. I can't remember who it is. I'll do my research before we play, you guys. Don't worry. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The ghost is of uh, the Cubone whose mother died. That's right. Spoilers! Um, but, you know, just, like, mysteries like that. Like, <laughs> like have like chilling with a cubone whose mother died <laughs> i think it'd be fantastic alternative idea maybe this is where impartial pierre's going with this but alternative idea what if you played as pokemon and like you know when you level up you learn new like attacks and stuff and you have to like help p 
people help other Pokemon and whatnot. And maybe um, uh, eventually like evolve. I don't know. That might be. It'd be cute. It'd be more of like a, that'd be definitely more like a mini arc or like a one shot idea. Yeah, it'd be fun. That can be the that can be the one shot that we do after, you know, where we play the Pokemon that are our companions. Everybody, <laughs> that's so good. Everybody starts as Eevee, and then, and then you uh, you branch off into different. <laughs> into different versions of Eevee. <laughs> That's so good. You can call it D and D and Eevee. No. Eeveelution is the name of it. Um, okay, hang on. I'm gonna read this. Alright, Impartial Pierre says, Futuristic sci-fi Pokemon concept where we've the ability to reach and settle on other planets with our Pokemon. Oh my gosh. And the characters reach a new world with a single Pokemon, preferably Gen 1, thank you. Uh, and there are dangers and mysteries that come with the new world. That's so fun. So futuristic sci-fi Pokemon, yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically you settle, it's kind of like, it reminds me of um, little, little Big World or Little Big Planet, an old like PlayStation game. That's dope. I like it. I like bringing the sci-fi in there. Yeah. Here's the, like, I really want, like, the next campaign that I create, like, on my own. Well, the next, like, D&D campaign that I create on my own. I want it to take place in space. I want to do some, like, Star Jammers you know, like space pirates stuff, Treasure Planet, um, one of my favorite Disney movies. Um, yeah, I think those are huge influences on me and my love of my love of uh, like that theme. I don't know what that's called, space pirates. <laughs> anyway, um, there used to be a a D and D setting. I mean, there still is technically, but they just haven't included it in fifth edition yet but yeah D, D setting where you can go to space and basically do that do that kind of stuff space pirate space pirating i think it was called spell jammers i said star jammers but that's uh that's a group of space pirates from marvel um Ravinos, you could be a Pokemon whose trainers go missing and you have to find them. Yeah, exactly. You gotta. It's Homeward Bound, the Pokemon story. <laughs> um, do you want to DM a future... Uh, yeah, oh, definitely. Definitely do. Um, yeah, I definitely want to DM again on the stream. You know, I, I DM'd uh, Childish Things, which you can find on our YouTube page now. Like, 22 episodes, sessions. And that was a blast. I loved it. Um, and I definitely want to do it again. You know, I, I, I wanted to share the love a little bit, and I think it's fantastic. Uh, the work that Emma and Graham have both put into their shows, and I, I'm, I'm so happy with the way that those have turned out in our our turning out um but yeah i'm definitely without a doubt i will return and dm again in the future on the stream uh the question is what that's the question so wait okay going back to this impartial pierre it'll open an opportunity to create an alien pokemon you don't have to stick to anything canon with the original pokemon could be a new arc to establish the towns, a new Elite Four. Okay, now you've hooked me. See, before I was like, that's a cool concept. Now I'm like envisioning it happening. 
yeah space stories are my favorite too i know it's so good uh yeah that's so fun that's really cool we create our own pokemon new new pokemon they're not even called pokemon they're called new pokemon <laughs> Homeward Bound, the Pokemon story. Yeah, I would definitely watch that movie as well. Um, I don't know if you guys saw um, any big board gamers out there. There's a game called Wingspan. That's really great. Um, and it's pretty new. It's 2019 it came out. Um, but it's it's a cool, like, uh, you know, uh, game where you're collecting birds you're not collecting, but you're saving birds and adding them into your, like, safe biome zone. Um, but you, as a player, are collecting the cards and uh, trying to build a tableau out of them to get, like, to, you know, kind of do combos and unlock points and stuff. So it's it's uh, it's pretty cool. But um, the there was a mod that somebody gave it on... Uh, on tabletop simulator for Pokemon and I have I never got to play it because they took it down for fear of being sued I mean rightfully so but uh, I it, it, I want to play it so bad because you it's like a you know you basically are collecting Pokemon and adding them to like a, a safe biome zone um, which just sounds so cool No, no, no. There's no more keeping it simple. <laughs> That's not happening anymore. <laughs> of course you want a space cat Pokemon. E-cat Carter. Of course you do. E- E-cat Cater. E-cater cat. <laughs> um. Alright. I might have gone a little too heavy with the highlights on this one. That might be a little too bright. Might uh, water that down a little bit. Post-apocalyptic Pokemon story. Childish things, but with Pokemon, yeah. I mean, that sounds awesome. I, I pro I think I'm gonna stay away from apocalyptic stuff for a little while, at least on stream, just because I feel like I used a lot of my, I used a lot of the the good ideas <laughs> with childish things. <laughs> I don't want to like rehash that too much, but that'd be cool. Collectively, cre collectively create our own creatures called companions and drop the whole Pokemon trope altogether. Yeah, that's I think that's the way to go, right? Is we basically make like like Beastmaster the game, and you are just like a person. You're basically anybody who listens to Spellbound. Um, you're basically just Delalia. It's a bunch of Delalia. It's a bunch of Delalias just going around like collecting animals, um, and like different cool beasts that are created, and you have to like save them from, you know, I don't know, poachers or something. All right, guys, this red's starting to come together a little more here. Definitely blew the highlights a little bit. I got a little carried away. I was talking too much. I blame you. <laughs> yeah, Delalia, the game. Um. Okay, so we're almost done with the red here. It's looking fine. Not quite where I want it, but I need to move on if I'm gonna try to get him semi done before the end of this stream. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> Red Munoz. I'd love to play a TTRPG where we play a crew of Steve Irwin's making a TV show of D&D monsters. That is so fun. That's so good. You're just like, you're a camera crew. There's a, um, 
Yeah, there's something there. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I like that. All right, guys. Uh, let's go to the silver. Yeah. Let's get some silver on. I think it's time. I think it's time to silver it up. I say that and then I go and do the red again. <laughs> I just can't, I just can't quit this. I just can't quit this red. Something off about it and I can't put my finger on it. I think the mistake was going with bloody red. I think I should have gone with a, uh, maybe a more like a lighter red to begin with. Just so, so thick. It was a thick paint. Should have watered it down more. All right, all right, good. I'm calling it. I'm calling it. No more red. No more red. Let's move on. Um, <laughs> yeah. Someone is the cameraman, and someone is the host, right? Everybody's a ranger. Every session, your agent sent you to find a specific monster, and you have to roll high enough. To get that good footage. Gotta get that juicy footage, everyone. Um, I just remembered that I had this gray over here from the beginning. I'm gonna go ahead and use that on this B -b -b base. This gets that gray on the base here. Because, you know, it's all about that base. I feel like I don't look at the camera enough. Should I look at the camera more? You guys want to see more or less of my face as I paint hmm. it's a solid question let's do a one shot COC game uh, Call of Cthulhu is similar to that except it was a news crew and a Lovecraftian haunted house what that's sick I like that. You have to have that footage to complete the quest. Like poachers. Um, yeah, that's... Look, that's what I love most about role-playing games, you guys. No matter the system you're using, no matter the rule set, like, you can just create whatever stories you want to create and then basically just play to your heart's desire, which is just the coolest. I love it. I love it so much. Okay. Got some gray down there. That's pretty solid. I think it's time for that steel. It's time to do that steel. My profile is beautimous. Thank you. Thank you. Keep painting. Got it. I'll keep painting. Give the people what they want. Side shots of my face while I paint. All right, guys, here comes, here comes the A train. And by A train, I mean silver. This is called blade steel. And I just realized I shouldn't have put that on my wet palette because <laughs> there's little pieces of like metallic in there. That seep through, but too late. We're gonna have to live with it. <laughs> We're just gonna go with it as is. Oh yeah, dang. I should have put black down first. Oh well. I'm forgetting things tonight. I'm forgetful. Forgive me. I'll put the I'll add some uh some Nuln oil to this later. You guys will see how much it makes it pop. It's cool. I I have been um, doing these uh, Marvel United figures as I've been doing cell shading on them, but with Ant-Man, because there's so much metal here, I just think he's going to look better if I, if I oil him up. Um, so I'm going to lather him up with some oil. 
just kidding. I have a, uh, there's a shade that uh, Citadel Paints makes called Nuln Oil, and you just kind of like spread it on on the figure, and it just kind of like sets into the, to the gaps. It's a good cheat. Um, it's a good cheat for making something look really cool without having done much work on it at all. Um, but I think it's gonna give us the result that we like, really want with this figure. There's no rules. There's no rules here. All right, so it looks a little messy. It's a little painted on. I'm gonna fix it. That's just the first coat. I have model, <laughs> I have model hands? Are these model hands? Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I haven't seen or read The Expanse. I have seen trailers for The Expanse and I would like to watch The Expanse. I've heard good things. I think my in-laws actually watch it. Maybe, is it, is it them? Is it they? Or is it somebody else who watched it and told me it's really good? Was it you? <laughs> Was it you, Pierre? Ooh, went a little too fat with that one. Dang. I'm gonna have to go back over that with red later. I think I'm using a little too big of a brush here for this. Get something a little smaller. That was a horrible accent. <laughs> Nobody judge me. Yeah, I'm doing a lot of no-nos tonight, y'all. I'm mixing this metallic paint in my water, which is bad because then when I go to paint any other color, it's gonna be metallic, which means I'm gonna have to switch my water, which means I'm gonna have to leave the stream, which I'm not gonna do. So we'll just be stuck here breaking the rules. This episode's all about rule breaking. Hey, what's up? I'm Justin Barron, the bad boy of painting. The bad boy of mini painting. And here at the green room, rules, pff, they don't matter. The Expanse is a heartbreaking, unforgiving, but really good. Came out with uh, like an expanse. Ooh, an RPG for the expanse. I'll check it out. Okay, gotta get really fine in here. Nice. Okay. That's good, that's good. Got some silver. Yeah, that helmet looks like a hot mess, but I'm gonna go back and clean it up. Rules. We don't need no stinking rules. It's true, I don't know whose voice that was. That's how I imagine you sound, Pierre. <laughs> rules. You're Sean Connery in my head, apparently. <laughs> Fine. Not too bad, not too bad. Yeah, the expanse. That's like the one where they're in. S they're definitely in space. I know that much. I definitely saw a trailer for it. Are there any, um, like systems that you guys really want to run but, like, haven't? I know for me, like,. I mean, like I said earlier, Blades in the Dark is one that I really want to play. Um, I have no idea if I want to run it or not. I assume I would, but I want to play it first. Um, and 
uh, I really want to do um, Not Today Evil, I think is what it's called. Or No Thank You Evil. No Thank You Evil, I think is what it's called. It's like a kid's um, like geared RPG. I really want to run that for like a group of kids. I think that'd be fun. <clears throat> you were oh my gosh, really? You were named after after Sean Connery? Dad's favorite James Bond. What? That's Kismet. Uh you've never seen a James Bond movie. You know, there's good ones and there's not so good ones. Is it fair to say there's bad ones? Yes, it is fair. It is fair to say that. Um, I missed some black in here. I gotta go do that black real quick. Um, yeah, no, there's you know there's definitely some <laughs> some weaker uh, James Bond films. When I grew up, I when I grew up as I grew up, I suppose when I was growing up is the term uh, is the phrase. I watched mostly Roger Moore. Uh, James Bond those were the ones that like I think we watched the most in my house <laughs> just like live and let die and uh, um, no, I can't think of any others Octopussy and um, I'm blanking on all of them but we watched a lot of those I think live and let die was like the one probably that I remember the most because that like that villain was like magical it was crazy all right so we got lots of silver going on here not looking too shabby not too shabby guys yeah yeah I gotta fix that helmet and the eyes that's really bothering me yeah I feel like everybody's dad loves James Bond and Indiana Jones maybe I'm wrong about that my dad watched a lot of westerns and a lot of a lot of uh, James Bond and Indiana Jones watched a lot of uh, Braveheart <laughs> a lot of Mel Gibson like Braveheart like the Patriot when Gladiator came out we watched a lot of Gladiator I mean we just like all the epic like war movies all right time to get the knee pads Bro, can you see this here we go Boink. that's a little heavy that's a little thick not too thick. Oh man, this this angle is really hard to get at. Right there. Okay, not bad. Not bad. We got this. Hey, we can do this. We're doing this, y'all. We're doing this. It's going well. almost done with the detailing of the silver here oh there's a train I'm not sure if you guys can hear that I live right by a train track which I did growing up like I lived by a train track and I loved it it, it reminds me of home now actually every time I hear like the train I love it nostalgic it's soothing I enjoy it uh oh what happened the camera went out there we go just lost uh, lost contact for a second so in case you weren't aware I use my <laughs> my phone as my second camera here and it does a pretty good job but sometimes I'll get like a weird text or something and then it'll just like turn off. Okay. Not bad. Not bad. Do I use a magnifying glass? That's a solid question. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Sorry, going back here for a second. Let's go back to the, uh, there's the train. Uh, Timothy... 
Wow, that's loud. <laughs> Just keep going. Uh, Timothy Dalton. Um, I really liked the Timothy Dalton ones. They cut Timothy Dalton after... Because, like, he wasn't... He was too, like, gritty. And then they go, like, like 10 years later and do the grittiest of gritty with, like, Daniel Craig. But I'm a huge Timothy Dalton fan, just as an actor. And I think his were great. Um, Goldfinger, Dr. No. Yeah. Yeah, solid stuff. Wow. Um, I believe his house was on the train tracks, too. Yes, right? Living in that train world. Let's go. It's still it's still going. I don't know if you can hear that or not. Um, all right. Moment of truth here. Let's see what I missed or what I need to clean up. Definitely want to fix this helmet. So let's let's get a bit of white in with the silver here. Make it a little bit lighter. Let's go over this helmet real quick and try to highlight a little bit. Okay, too much white. <laughs> Way too much white. I'll have to fix that. Let's try to wet blend this a little bit. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you can see there where I got a little too bright of a white on there. But, in the end, I just want to get rid of these brush strokes. That's the really the big thing I want to kill on. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, anybody who's watching who's in the Midwest right now knows about all these... Well, I guess anybody who's watching uh, knows about the, like, the crazy weather the Midwest has been having, but we today got like a beautiful like fi high 50s, low 60s, little breezy, sunny day, and it's been the worst thing having to, I, I worked nine hours at the game store today, and I was just stuck inside looking at all the people jogging by, and <laughs> it's been um, yeah so, I'm gonna go jogging in the morning no matter the weather, I'm doing it because I just really want to. Um, but that's why I have the window open right now. Just because it's so gorgeous out. Which is, I don't know, not typical for late February here. But look, I'll take it. Did the dogs... No, they didn't. Actually, I take that back. When Deanna got home, she took them on a long walk. So, yeah. The dogs did get to enjoy the weather. More than I did, at least, which is fine. Which is more important, I guess. Um... Negative 17 last week? Holy moly. And then 45 today. Yeah. It's crazy how it flips like that, huh? Um, I don't think I've talked much about my dogs on, on stream yet, but I have two dogs. They are adorable. And we love them. Um, their names are Quinn and Ivy. Quinn is a... Um, beautiful uh, Australian cattle dog and Ivy is a Pomeranian pug mix and she's got this snarl this underbite that uh, kills people literally she's a murderer so I'm just going in and highlighting the the ridges of the metal here try to make it pop a little more looks a little liquidy it's not exactly what I was going for but it's doing its job mostly um, 
Yeah, the helmet still looks weird. <laughs> I'm gonna have to do something about that. The body, though, looks killer. I think. I'm gonna have to paint that coin. Yeah, she's the deadliest of puppers, for sure, Ivy. And she knows it, too. Like, she'll... She ain't got a problem. With, uh... Murder. <laughs> would you guys watch... Yeah, of course you would. But... Could you imagine a show where it's just like dog killer, dog murder, but like it's not somebody killing dogs, obviously. It's a dog who is a murderer. I guess that's just Cujo, actually. <laughs> I guess that's just, that's already a thing. But I want it to be like a, like a, like a crime noir, not like a horror film. water break good stuff gotta love that water folks all right i'm gonna jump off the ant-man himself and instead we're gonna look at uh the coin now Yeah, I'll come back. To, I'll come back to the Ant-Man stuff later. Let's let's jump to the coin for now, because I wanna I wanna get to the coin and I wanna create the the base before we finish the the stream here in a little bit. Um, the coin I think we're gonna go with like a because it's a quarter, but I don't want to do more silver. I feel like that's too much silver, so I'm gonna add a little bit of like a bronze in here, and we're gonna combine these two and see what we get to kind of give it a little more of like a gold coin feel all right so what we got here there we go sorry that was blurry you guys like this music i think the music's pretty good right it's just chill chill tunes do people call music tunes anymore? I swear to God, I, I'm an outdated dinosaur. <laughs> I say broadcast and I say tunes. Okay, good to know. Thanks, Reb. I'm calling you Reb from now on. All right, we got a weird mix of silver, gold. Yeah, it's a gold quarter. You feel me? You know what I'm talking about. All right, here's the thing, though. It's really big, and I need more paint. <laughs> Let's see. Let's do a bigger mix here. Yeah, rib. All right. We're going to blend all this together here. We got to get maximum paint coverage. Sick. Slather it on! Slather it on! Oh yeah, that's gonna look dope. I like it. It's already sl sparkly. Although I'm thinking I should have probably put down a <laughs> base coat on here first. Like I said earlier, we're just doing everything wrong tonight, and then we'll fix it all later. You know, secretly, that was the point of this episode, was to teach you how to go about doing things the wrong way and then just, you know, fix them later because sometimes things don't go according to plan and that's okay oh, that's a gold rock now we got a gold rock okay um remember what I was, remember, okay, remember a long time ago you guys, okay, think back okay Think back to a long, long time ago when I said, we'll go back and fix it later. Remember that? Remember when I said that? We're going to have to fix it now is the problem. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to go over this with some gray. We need a base coat here. So we're just going to gray this up. Uh, 
and then we're gonna have to wait for it to dry. We'll just everybody will blow on it at the same time, and it'll it'll be fine. Yeah, I'm, I really should start coming into this uh, stream with more of a plan on how to paint what I'm trying to paint. I promise next week I'll <laughs> do that. But yeah, we're just having some Bob Ross moments. This is what Bob Ross taught me. It's okay. Because in the end, it's all part of the process. Almost there, almost there. Screw plans, life is unexpected. Exactly. Exactly. All right, come on, Ant-Man, let's go. Come on, Ant-Man, let's go party. All right. We're just gonna do Gotta let that dry. Yeah, you haven't heard uh, Come On Ant-Man, Let's Go Party in a while? I wonder why. That's weird. That's bizarre. Okay, while that's drying, what do we do? We play a game. And the game is called game is called uh, what should I paint next week that's the game yeah it's a super skate yeah for sure um, my wife really wants to uh, get roller skates and like kind of re teach ourselves how to roller skate so that's something we're probably gonna do this summer which sounds fun I used to love rollerblading when I was a kid. I used to blade. I used to blade across the neighborhood. Okay. Wave it. Let's just wave it around a little bit. Sometimes I use a blow dryer, but I didn't have one handy. Um, let's fix the helmet while we're here. But yeah, so what... Here, here's my big question for those of you still watching. Those of you who are up with me this late at night, thanks so much for being here. If you haven't already, I would appreciate, I would love you to hit that follow button and uh, make sure you turn on the notifications so that you can catch all of our wonderful streams. Um, you know, on Friday, Friday nights we do, uh, a cosmic horror themed uh, like D and D game called Blood of My Blood, and on Sunday mornings we do the polar opposite. We do a a, a family friendly adventure called Pitfalls and Ponies, and they both are beautiful, beautiful shows. You should definitely check them out. They just started, so it's not too late to get on board. I play a character named Tiago in the one that happens in Blood of My Blood on Friday nights. And although I don't play a pony on Sunday mornings, I like to believe I do. And I play along with them at home. As should you all. Uh... <laughs> But yeah, so I'll be, and I'm here every Tuesday night. Let me get that off there. I'm here every Tuesday night, 8.30 till now-ish, central time. I'm a pony in spirit. They call me the spirit pony. Emma, if you're still watching, I expect a cameo from the spirit pony at some point, please. Thank you. 
Um, so what should I paint next week? Should we st should we keep with the Marvel? Are you guys tired of Marvel stuff? Should I do a uh, like more of like a classic D and D thing? I have a number of different things, but I guess the options are: do we do another Marvel character, or do we take a break from it and do like more of a D and D thing? Those are the two options because, or or I could paint a dog. I still have some of the dogs that I haven't painted from the Dungeons and Doggies uh, campaign. So those are your options. All right, Pierre, you're not tired of Marvel. Hey, that makes me happy because I was really scared people are gonna be like, God, yes, please stop this Marvel stuff. You're so bad at it, dude. Just kidding, I didn't think anybody would say that, but maybe take it. Um, yeah, I, uh, ooh yeah, get that white in there. That's, uh, that's looking pretty cool. Got a little sunlight on the, the old dome there. Let's see. Let's get a better visual. There we go. All right, guys. I'm going to fix those eyes in a second so they don't look like soulless voids. And I'm going to do... I'm about to do the, the oil that I was talking about, and then I'll add highlights to the other stuff. But um, No, I'm not at all... Well... It's a good question. I, I'm not tired of painting the Marvel stuff. Like, I'm excited to. They just... Here's the thing about the Marvel stuff. They all mean so much to me <laughs> that I want to, like, do them carefully. And I feel like sometimes when I get unfocused on stream, I uh, maybe rush job a little bit or something like that. And I... Maybe I want to give it more of a, uh, like, I'm still open to do them on stream, obviously, but maybe next week I do something I just don't really even care about painting. <laughs> Sounds bad, but something I can like just kind of like speed paint and like not really get precious about it. So yeah, we have one vote for dog. We have one vote for Marvel. I'm down with either. Down with either, y'all. I think I have my the dog figures are back there. I can show you the ones that I have options of, and I can show you the Marvel figures I have options of, and we can kind of go from there. This is still so wet, man. Come on. All right, let me fix a few more things while we're waiting. Beep. That's good. Some of that red. What else did I miss? All right, here. Cool, 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 cool. do Marvel or dog then Marvel the dog then Marvel <laughs> I'll just alternate yeah maybe we switch it up next week and do a dog all right well while Ant-Man is drying let me see if I can find my these dog figures <laughs> are they in there nope are they in there? Those are those. Okay, so I'll show you some of the ones I've done before. Those. Yeah, they're there. They're the brown ones. That's right. Okay. Put that away. Oops.
Alright, so let's see. I'll show you some of my past doggos. Oh, wait. That's not my past doggos. Oh, uh, they're all the way over there. You know what? I'll show you the past dogs next week. For now, let's look at some of the options we have. So we have this little guy who is a. Uh, like a wizard of some kind. I think he's like a wizard. I don't know what breed of dog that is. I think it's like a Like a collie a Collie wizard We have this little dachshund Like a dachshund sorcerer. He looks like uh, Like Doctor Strange as a as a dachshund as a wiener dog Um We've got this big floofer. Um, he's like a, what is that, like a St. Bernard, maybe? Um, he's just got like, he's like a pack mule. He's got all kinds of stuff on him. I don't know what he's supposed to be. We've got this one. I remember her, this is a druid, and I don't know her name. Don't know her name. Uh, sorry, I don't know her. <laughs> her uh breed but i do know her name is what i was trying to say her name i know her name is freya i'm pretty sure um they gave like backstories and stuff and then we have the two tiny tiny ones um we have the corgi the corgi uh who is like a little i don't know what that is like a rogue a corgi rogue maybe or a ranger and then uh, no, this is the rogue. This is the Chihuahua rogue with a little dagger in his mouth. Little Chihuahua. So, I mean, honestly, I could do like maybe a couple of these next week, depending on how detailed they are, because they're so small. I mean, like these three fit in my hand compared to Ant Man, right? So, there's just, you know, of course, they're more detailed, so then it's. Who knows? So, if I do a dog next week, I'm thinking the Chihuahua, the Dachshund, the Corgi, the Collie, the th the Druid one that I don't know what kind of dog that is, or the big Saint Bernard, the big boy. Those are your options. <sighs> Choose wisely, folks. Choose wisely. Okay. I'm gonna see if I can fix these eyes while we f finish up the last uh, 10 minutes of the stream here. Let's see if I can adjust the eyes here a bit. I wanna do something that makes it look reflective, like there's some sort of a reflective screen. So I think I'm gonna do a drop of like some sort of like a lighter sheen. exactly what I was going for but can I see the dachshund and the druid again yes you can give me one sec here um, Yeah, this reflective surface is kind of hard to draw. <laughs> Interesting. Try to figure out what I want to do there. <coughs> uh, let's see. Dachshund. Dachshund, 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 dachshund. Uh, the, sorry. 
dachshund is here. Um, so this is the little guy. Hello, I'm a little guy. I'm a dachshund. And I am a sorcerer. I cast magic that is inherently within my body already. I don't need to run books or sell my soul. Uh, and the druid is here. Hello, I am a druid dog. This is naturally how I talk. I don't know why. It's the voice I was given. There's like a lot of, uh, like, I don't know, misty kind of furs and whatnot on, on her. So those are the two. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad. So, I'm glad you like my voices. Thank you. Um, um, <laughs> let's see. Which one should it be? Okay. And let's see. We're at. open um sorry I'm trying to adjust the cord <laughs> it's not going where I want it to go okay I <laughs> Pierre I was wondering why you were booing me but I didn't want to like say anything about it in case I just like missed something that I said. <laughs> That's really funny though. Um, uh, <laughs> That's funny. Boots. Boots and cats and boots and cats. Your pal hit the button. That's cute. Um, you vote the dachshund. Okay. Any other votes for one way or the other there, friends? see I am just about done here with my boy Ant-Man we are gonna put on that Nolm oil I was talking about and then I think I mean I'll go through and do some highlights later with him but I think this is mostly gonna be what I wanted to do here so yeah this is what I was talking about so this is called Nolm oil it's a shade yeah a lot of uh, painters consider this cheating which I understand why they think that but screw that there's no rules here it's making stuff look good who cares how I do it who cares how I do it nobody cares that's the answer so yeah what we're gonna do is just uh, get some of that on the brush and I'll let you see here when I put it on kind of see how it like finds the gaps and finds the grooves and it just sinks right into them now I'm only putting this on the metal parts not the whole figure I could do the whole figure but it would really darken him up more and I don't want him to be any darker than he already is I want him to make sure I want to make sure he pops with that red this is just to help the metal look more metally. Metal. Yeah, you can already see the difference there, like on the front chest plate. See how that the black outline where the metal is? It like gets in those grooves. Oh, it's beautiful. It helps so much to define the details. It's like it's like giving everything a little black line of separation and this is just null oil like I said there uh, I don't know if I said that but there are others similar to it like earth shade and uh, some, some, some something else that I have but yeah they're just like lifesavers 
they make everything you do look beautiful. Now this is the first of the Marvel figures that I've actually put this on. Like I said, I, I, I use it sparingly because I don't want I don't want to rely on it too heavily. I just it, I mean it's hard to deny how good it makes that metal look. Oh baby, look at that. Almost knocked it over. That's the, that's what you don't want to do. <laughs> All right, now look at the difference. Look at that metal. Right. Ah, oh, beautiful. Look at that. All right, now I want to do the same thing to the coin, just to make it stand out. I want to get the the black and the grooves. I'm just gonna be really, really just going over all this here. Just nearly done. I could have spent more time on the base, but yeah, I didn't think it would make for a very interesting stream. <laughs> yeah, Dark Plane. Do you ever use Do you ever use uh, the Citadel shades? They're they're gorgeous. Look at that. Look at that angle right there. Like that's what I live for <laughs> these are the moments I paint for yeah yeah they're so good okay all right folks let's I think it's time to wrap this sucker up I just the last thing I want to do is real quick this this uh, null oil shouldn't take too long to to dry here and after that, I just want to go over some... I want to do a little bit of dry brushing back with that silver and gold that I made earlier. Although it's completely dried out now. Um, maybe. Uh, there's still some life left in it. I'm just going to... I don't need much of it. I'm just going to dry brush with it over uh, that coin to make it look a little shiny. Make it stand out from the rest of the base. Um... Yeah. Oh, baby. I'll never, I'll never not love that mold oil. <laughs> so good. Thanks for sharing your, well, thank you, Pierre, for watching the stream tonight. And just like being an all around good person. You are something special, my friend. <laughs> we appreciate you. I know I speak for all of us when I say you are such a blessing to the stream and just as a friend okay yeah that's not bad dark plane sometimes I prime in a color and then only paint with ten coats of shades holy crap you do that's so cool so before the stream ends tonight, we're going to be raiding Atomic Mango Mom. Show her some love. She's she's drawing right now? She's drawing original characters right now? That's dope. So yeah, a um, little bit about raids. Um, first of all, let me let it be known, this is my first time being on this end of a raid. Um, so I hope I do it right. Um, but you don't really have to do anything. Um, You'll be sent over to her stream. Show her some love when you're over there. She's doing original characters very much like Rebecca does. Um, so, you know, I'm sure it's something that you'll all love to watch. I'll plan on watching her for a little while too. Um, come on, baby, dry. Let me get my dry brush ready. Beep, 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 beep. Let's 
sick. Going a little over time tonight, but I think I'll be okay. the drying game everybody wave your figure in the air wave it around so it dries faster you're very welcome Pierre you're very welcome you're very welcome Pierre wait that's my hang on I'll do a better Sean Connery hang on uh -uh. impartial Pierre you are the reason that we exist Yeah, I was looking right at you, Dark Plane. Dark Plane. It's my. Oh, this is this is more of a this is more of a Sean Connery. Yes. Don't forget to watch Pitfalls and Ponies, on Ghostlight RPGs. Sunday mornings at ten thirty Central Time, Central Standard. Soon to be Central Daylight Time, or whatever. Oh my gosh, we're almost there. Just dry already. <laughs> you guys, we're literally watching paint dry right now. Mm. You guys liked it? You guys like my Sean Connery? Tune in to see Pitfalls and Ponies starring Star Whistle. No, wait, that turned a little German. Starring Star Whistle. Star Whistle. The name's Bond. James Bond. It's not the best. There's definitely better. It's not bad. It's not bad. Um, I can't do a Daniel Craig. <laughs> Why doesn't he have an iconic voice? Darn it. <laughs> okay. I think we're good. I think we're good. I think it just looks wet because I put so much on there. But... All right, here we go. Ready to see some dry brushing, people? So we take it, and then we wipe it off. We wipe it off from the brush, and then we're just gonna, we're just gonna uh, kind of, what do you call it? Brush it on uh, to the thing here. Now I think I may need a little more gold to really do this fully and properly. Yeah, it's um, it's not doing exactly what I want it to do. I think I need more paint. Let's get a little more paint. Boop. Sometimes all it takes is a little bit of paint to really make the world go round. Where did I put that damn gold? Mrs. Moneypenny. Seriously, where's the gold? <laughs> oh, oh, it's over here. That's right. Alright. Let's blend. Boop. A little bit of that. A little bit of that. Let's just throw in a little bit of this for good measure. Alright. Let's mix these up. Because I want to finish this stream. So, let's see. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about right there. Look at that. Look at that beautiful color. All right, right there. This is the one I just made. <laughs> I know it's out of focus. I'm sorry. Okay. Boop, boop, boop. Great. And now we put the gold on. There's a hint of that gold on the coin. I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera, but it looks pretty poppin' in person. Ah. 
I'm gonna, for the record, I'm gonna color this underground, like more of a brown, like a reddish brown, so that the coin stands out even more. Cause it's a little, it's a lot of gray going on right now. But I'll do that later. Uh, there's no point in continuing to do that. Watch. Okay. Beautiful. Beautiful, folks. So, here is our finished Ant-Man. Still a little, it looks, it looks messy on the camera, the eyes, but I promise in person, they actually look pretty, pretty clean. Um, like I said, I didn't finish the base, but we got pretty much what we wanted out of it. So, you can join the other Avengers. Um, and next week, let's switch over here. So, next week, I'm going to be doing some dogs. We're going to switch it up. We're going to, we're not going to do the Marvel next week. We're going to do some, some little doggos, like this big fluffer and this little chihuahua. <laughs> um, we'll see. We'll just, uh, I'll, you know, I'll have them all ready next week and we'll just kind of, maybe we can get through a few of them. Um, but yeah, so thanks so much for sticking around with me. I know I went a little later than, than usual, but, uh, appreciate you guys chilling with me tonight, giving me some good, uh, some good vibes and just some fun chats. Um, next week I'll be back, uh, with hopefully, uh, two more players from, uh, you know, Blood of My Blood and Pitfalls and Ponies. I'm gonna try to secure. Uh, maybe I can get. Uh, maybe I can get William, who plays Theodore, on the on the stream next week. And somebody from the somebody from Pitfalls and Ponies. Maybe we'll get Andy. We can get Andy on next week. So um, I don't know. We'll see. Just throwing some names out there. Uh, but we'll talk more about some cool stuff and we'll paint some dogs. I hope you'll you'll come back and join us. So until then, I'm going to say goodbye and I'm going to raid Atomic Mango Mom. So let's see, I do slash R-A-I-D space. Oh yeah, here we go. What's happening? Oh, you already did it. Thanks for the help. See you guys later. Bye.